reaction to that video up on YouTube, like within that day, I could see people getting irritated about that. Because at that point, I'm not really sure if that would cannibalize, but I could see people getting asked mad about that. And that's fair, I think. Um, so principally underlying that, like, what, what's going on? What's the big issue? It's that they, they are entitled to money and views and it's getting taken from them. Um, principally, oof, that's a... No, I, I, I'm, I'm actually intending today to figure out my position, ultimately. I don't know, I'm going to use you for it. Cause... Well, principally, there are like, there's a couple, I think principally, you'd have to go way back into what, what do we think about, um, what do we think about copyright? And that's a difficult question. Let's say, for instance, that somebody could violate somebody else's copyright and make $10 million without ever negatively impacting the original copyright holder. Would that be ethical or unethical? Um, it was it was interesting because you brought it up earlier, and I, I'm I'm with you on it. The the game one mm -hmm. with stories and stuff. Um, I actually I yeah. ask it every once in a while when we do an EFAP episode. A long play is ethical, and obviously everyone mm -hmm. knee jerk is like, of course they are. I enjoy them, and it's like that. <laughs> uh, long plays, if for anybody who doesn't know, it's the just concept of you have the full game recorded and you don't speak. You don't you don't say anything. You you have um. People walking around and doing choices, especially games where like that matters. You can argue that's some level of the input from the creator. But if we have a game like uh, the stuff from is it Supermassive Games, where they make games that are like story based entirely, they're almost films. Little Hope mm -hmm. would probably be the best example. It's a video game that really that, that's a whole other conversation. It's barely a video game. But if they uploaded that in full and made money off it, is that right? Should that be done? Is and and you know you were talking about people not doing enough to respond to it. It's like I wonder if. Um, the game company knew about it. They probably do know about it. They've decided that the promotion is enough to outweigh it. Kind of like whether or not you should stop shoplifting with extra security or not. Because it's like mm -hmm. spending, you know, the balances and stuff. I think that there's two... Oh, actually, to be as a quick addendum to that, some companies are aware of that, and some companies do take a stand against that. So, for instance, um, Nintendo? Atlas Games, which I believe made Persona? Yes. Um, Atlas Games, I believe, had a policy where once the game was released, they didn't want people streaming or uploading anything past like the first chapter of the game or something. Mm -hmm. um, and they said they would be striking people. You could upload like up to a certain part, and then they didn't want people spoiling the rest. Yeah, so, and I, yeah. I think Nintendo just outright like I remember Total Biscuit almost swearing them off because of the shit that they did. We don't um, talk about Nintendo because Nintendo lives in their whole other universe. Of yeah, stupid. Shit. Well, and Nintendo, like if you've got like a little brother walking around in the background of your video, like with <laughs> a fucking a Zelda. Song or a uh, link hat on like they'll send like fucking japanese psyops assassins to your house to like kill you nintendo is in a whole other world of crazy shit well that's that's the thing the part that makes this a little bit more reasonable right is that we we, we can both agree on the either extreme uh, on one side like when you've turned a 10 minute video into 10 hours with your commentary it's like you've transformed that that's yours they can't claim that the money you've gotten from that should belong to them that's a like we're, yeah but that's this is where the first principle thing is really important because people keep bringing that up but it's interesting. People say, like, transformative content is better. And it's like, well, why? Because it's transformative. Well, if your initial argument was the original video is harmed, in my personal opinion, I feel like transformative content might be more harmful than straight rips, right? Like, if would I watch an original video or would I watch a boring Asmongold react to it? I'd probably just watch the original video because why mm -hmm. do I want, like, the shittier version, like, maybe the chat on the side? I don't know. But for highly transformative content, there might be times where it's like, this guy uploaded a video. I don't know if I trust it or not. I'm just going to wait until somebody that I trust reacts to it, and then I'll see, like, if it's good or not, right? So in sure. that sense, I feel like transformative videos can be far more harmful. There are probably certain online content creators that will give a take on something political and people won't watch that original video but they'll wait for me to respond to it to know why they do or don't like it but they have no desire to engage with the original and they're just looking for my transformative reaction to it so in that sense that would be a highly transformative reaction but it would actually be damaging to the initial video because nobody wants to watch the initial they just want to see the response to it you know which is why i think that this is a mess this whole conversation with everybody involved because uh, everyone's darting from different positions and defending different positions and a lot of people who are included when they shouldn't be or vice versa i've seen people say like why would you take any issues with any of this when you run a react channel it's like that's mm -hmm. true but i love reactions like if, if there's a video that's 10 minutes long talking about like everything that's wrong with american politics and then you cover it and you let's say turn it into a 20 30 minute video but you have really great research uh fucking annihilating it and then that person says why don't you feel for me more i got all my shit stolen by destiny everyone's watching that video instead i'd be like yeah good for you like the, the, good for you meaning destiny that you've um taken the shit video dramatically improved it and uh, transformed it into a brand new piece of content. I assume that's got to be a part of uh, deciding whether or not someone is is frustrated or not with the situation. But 
So here, this is so this is what I always criticize people for, and I think you see it happening a lot here. Is sometimes it feels like people are just trying to shit on people, and they don't actually care about like helping people. It reminds me of when like progressives talk about like taxing billionaires, and it right. doesn't seem like they care as much about the social programs. They just want to like punish people for being billionaires. I think that there are. I think that if people cared, I think that there are a consistent set of guidelines that you could develop that I'm pretty sure streamers and YouTubers would be on board with. Firstly, I do think on general, I do think YouTubers do like reactions because it does feel good to get your content in front of a whole new audience even if you're not generally getting those views yeah. either one of two things happens either one you're a really small youtuber in which case it's almost certainly going to help or two you're a larger youtuber and you'd rather be in front of a new audience than just get like more money for a video right like if i upload a video and it gets like a two hundred thousand views but it could have been a million views but instead somebody like lex friedman or joe rogan reacts to it and they cannibalize all the views i don't care i'd rather have my video in front of their audience i don't need the money on that video i'm fine right i don't need the money for that video i'd rather have the reaction in front of a different audience but if you're a really small content creator probably having anyway i i feel like um there were i think there were three things i said earlier is one if somebody put out like a list of standards like don't react to videos within a week of them being uploaded i think that's fair even one or two weeks i think that's totally fair um a <laughs> second thing would be like requirements to link back to the person's either YouTube channel, original video, or Patreon especially. I think that's nice to like direct people back if they wanna give money or whatever, if they appreciate it. So um, one, two. And then the third one, it would be nice if there was some sort of like big word doc for like people to look up YouTube people and if like, hey, if you wanna react to my video, that's fine, just throw me 20 bucks or something. Like I think those are three things where it, it lets the reactors keep making money doing their shit, the audiences are happy, and the people having their reactions are having them in like the best way possible. That would be like a positive path forward that like makes everybody happy but right now it seems like people are just really ass mad about sure. streamers so yeah. um the funny thing about this about that is i would almost be annoyed with the rule that i have to wait a week before i can respond to a video especially if it's like regarding something i consider like false information which i know sounds absurd when i cover mostly media but it can get mm -hmm. pretty testy over in that side of youtube so like you know as, as i feel like if i responded to something a day after it came out and then i had all the views on it and they were like hey what the fuck are you supposed to give me a week i'd be like i don't care your video was shit like it was it was mm -hmm. actually spreading misinformation like i don't care to give you a week so that you can get views from it like i, I sure but then you annoyed. could just you could just like respond to the video without actually like showing the video right um possible but i assume you're going to be uploading it with the the concept that this is a video getting responded to and people might end up choosing that instead and feel like i don't need to see the original you know hmm, maybe what is the time for this i'm so sorry okay um it's not so yeah, um, I, I can understand there being some drawbacks, but I mean, like, there are ways where, like, you would just have to try to make it so that your content is, like, highly transformative at that point, you know? Um, well, just to clarify, because I sure assume it, yeah. uh, when I was talking about extremes, right, I went one direction, now I want to go with the other, which is that someone just re-uploads your video. Um, I can't remember what you were mm -hmm. saying, whether or not you take issue with that. If somebody were to just straight re-upload my video, mm, a different channel, I think I would I would lean towards not liking it. I'm not sure how much I would care, but I'd probably lean towards not liking it. I mean, that'd be like a 55, 45 thing. Okay, um, and then I assume would these things change it if they re-uploaded and it made a shit ton of money, had a shit ton of views, much more than yours? Mm, I, I think that once you hit a certain like income level for streaming or YouTube, I think the only thing you start to care about is exposure. Okay. I don't think... Um, like. If I if I miss out on like two thousand dollars from a video, but the cost of that is it gets in front of like a million viewers that wouldn't have ordinarily watched it, like I'd lose the money on that video every single time. Listen, like, it's I'm an interesting just, idea. I assume you mean that yeah. even if that channel was called like Blumpy and it's run by some guy in his basement who's just trying to get videos on that he doesn't want to have to work for, he uploads them, people would still be enjoying you and your coverage and therefore your notoriety would be going oh, up. Oh mm, I don't think I would like that as much. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. I'm sorry. It's just a dumb it's okay. I got your okay. stream. I can see um, what you're doing. It's all good. We just we watch Force and we all mm -hmm. struggle with him psychologically. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, sorry. Um, the the there was a legitimate argument. I remember Pokemon fought with a guy that did this a long time ago. Uh, and I guess we just don't talk about these channels anymore because people are really fixated on the streamers. But right. there used to be these channels where all they would do is like just re-upload either compilations or highlights from other people's content. And yeah. oftentimes they wouldn't link back to like anything. Um, I think I could understand people being irritated about those channels. And I don't know, because like even my clips would show up sometimes, and but like they don't link back to anything. People oftentimes don't even know what it is. Those people, um, sometimes the people that view that content have no engagement with other stuff. Like, for instance, let's say Lex Friedman or Joe Rogan uploads a video of mine with no commentary for an hour. I'm probably okay with that. But if there's a channel called, like, 
funny politics videos or something and they just like upload a whole bunch of random shit and they throw a video of mine on, I'm like, I don't think I'm getting any value out of this whatsoever, you know? Right, so it is determinant then on what you get out of the, the situation. Um, maybe, yeah. They, like, there, like, there, there exists, like, I think that the, I think if, yeah, actually, I think I could probably come down. Channels that exist that don't even have, like, a person, it's not even, like, a person, it's just a channel that exists to, like, rip content from, like, other streams or YouTube videos, and they just throw them up in, like, compilations or whatever, I think those channels are probably harmful to everybody, yeah. So, you know, the, um, sort of defining the ethics through its consequences versus the act in and of itself, I would still mm -hmm. take issue with that guy. Let's say he was a friend of mine, the guy in the basement, and he says, like, dude, I've been making, like, thousands off of blah, 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 and I'd just be like, uh, you know, this scenario, he's making zero. He's like, I can't believe this isn't working. Uploading Destiny, Gold, all these different people, and I just, I'm, and it's not getting any traction. I'd be like, dude, why don't you make something? And then he'd be like, I, I can't, and, and they're, they're way better. I, I would be like, this is, I can't help but be critical of it in the same way that I feel like we're all kind of critical of like any content that does lack uh, what we perceive to be like hard work or talent. Because I think you were almost implying like you want to figure out what it is that's annoying people when it's amazing that they complain about this and yet you can fucking just stream a game to talk about anything. And uh, you know like vlogging or lots of YouTube channels have been hyper successful off that and it's like do you take issue with them? They're relatively low effort. It's like well I think yeah the the big issue with streaming and this has always been the the thing about streaming is streaming as a content medium is some of the lowest prepared effort to highest financial gain of any co of any yeah. content that's ever existed on the internet, right? Yeah, somebody can spend six months to produce a, a, a three hour video and a streamer can spend six months doing 10 hours of content a day um, and they'll get compensated way more for it. Although to be fair, this is the, um, this is the, this is the way of all content, unfortunately, right? Like people that take the time to produce higher quality content, like, oh my God, if you're an animator or something, like that type of content is going to take so long and it's harder to make money off of the effort put in versus like short form content, you know? Well, it's interesting because I, uh, I tried to listen to a lot of what you've been talking about today before we had a chat. Um, you said like, you know, there's a bit of a divide between streamers and YouTubers that YouTubers might be mistaken in thinking like streaming is just the lazy people. When it's absolutely not the case necessarily and vice versa that youtubers just because they don't take uh they don't upload anything but once a year that they're mm -hmm. uh it's like they're not what do they do work for a week and then put it up and then do nothing for the rest of the yeah year? like that i sort of thing. like i yeah, I would fight against, I like, I, I love shitting on streamers, okay, because I hate streamers, I hate everyone's fucking industry, okay, because they're all horrible people, okay? So I do like shitting on streamers, but I don't want YouTubers to shit on streamers, okay? Because it's not like, these guys are not well, like I bastions mean, of, like, hardworking, okay, like, yeah. So if, <laughs> like, I feel uniquely, yeah. like, I release, I'm almost at the point now I'm releasing one per year at about six hours long, and the next one's coming out mm -hmm. next month, but I also run a weekly stream where we react to videos, that's like a whole thing, or movies, or TV, or whatever else. And uh, sure. we've we've gotten, I think, four major episodes. I was hoping to get you on one of them to talk about reacting. And we, we went after our relevant denims, uh, Hassan, twice. Mm -hmm. They're just full of... I went to their streams and I looked through everything that they do and then showed people what they do. And then we talked about it ethically. It's, it's complicated. I don't deny that. But, you know, mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to start easy with the... Uh, the Hassan one that we went after was, I don't know if you know this, when this happened, it was a couple of years ago, but it was, he was watching Jay's video, uh, Jay Axie, and he, and he got up and walked away, and most of the video plays when Hassan's not even on screen. <laughs> ah, what a god. Now, like, what I assume god, we're yeah. on the same team, and we say, like, that's, can we call, can we call that, he should, he's ought not to do that. Yeah, so I guess the question is, is why not like what yeah. remember you at the beginning of this and i'm not saying he should everybody's gonna interpret it as like oh he should be able to but i'm curious like what is the reason why we don't like that is it because we perceive him as being lazy is it because of there's some harm to the creator that's different there is it yeah i'm curious what Could is it, the what is the first principles attack against that sort of reaction? like why do we not like that particular style of reaction um because i i'm inclined to believe it's actually a big mix of both and the that's what's making this so complicated is that people need to figure out exactly what they think and mean by all this stuff um, I consider myself pretty critical of, of content that's hyper successful that's based on basically zero effort. That would be one of the best examples ever that he's making money off of nothing. Um, and you might be like, well, what's wrong with that? Why, why can't someone do that? You know, in isolation of where he's gotten this content from or anything to do with JX. And it's just, mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's like an intuition thing. You've got not, not Can a great I... argument going for you. You just have to think about like, what is it that's frustrating about that versus everyone else mm -hmm. having to work so hard, I guess. Yeah. Let me, and I'm curious, cause I asked you a question on that. Um, cause intuitively I would agree with you, but then like, so people will say like reacting is zero effort. You're making a ton of money off of it. Couldn't you argue the same for anybody that just streams video games though? Yes. Like you're I think literally so. if, yeah, um, just streaming video games. Yeah, go ahead. The, the little hope game, if you streamed that and said nothing, 
Uh, I, oh, no, no. I mean, even any video. Like, let's say you stream League of Legends. Isn't that also, like, zero effort? Like, so, you're just playing games. Like, most people do that for free. Right? The, the reason why I get gun for little hope is because I don't think there's a scenario where you can actually justify it. Meanwhile, with something like League of Legends, if you were a pro player and you're concentrating and you're doing things that are incredible that no one else can do, or at least few people can, I think there's a lot of value in that. Um, it, it's arguable, a form of trans formative content but obviously this is the problem that the law slash understanding of everything hasn't caught up to the internet still with all of this i think that's another problem is everyone else you know you're talking about how like streamers don't react to this the way that their fans will often do i think a lot of streamers don't know that this is a problem in jay's video about this he wanted to very fairly ask all of his youtuber friends do they have a problem with the idea that someone fully uploaded their video reacting to it with zero reactions it was just their video half of them mm -hmm. said yeah that's fucked up the other half said no it's fine yeah, I saw that. And to be all represent that in the best faith. I don't think it was half. I think it was 10 and 5, wasn't it? 10 and 5? I think 10 of them said they didn't want it and 5 of them said they did. It was my, the only thing I took away from it was the fact that we're seriously not at a point of agreement most yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought that was interesting. Yeah, cuz that was him talking to his friends and he's selecting for whatever. So like even on the guy that was trying to make a point, it seemed like yeah. there were a lot of people who asked was like, "I I don't really care that much as long as they credit me," you know. Yeah, I, th yeah. I think what people will intuitively take from it is, well, Surely it promotes me. Even if I don't get paid for that, uh, it, it can only help, surely. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if we then went into the stats, like I know Dark Viper does with trying to prove, like, definitively that either views it. It's, it's, I think it's, it's almost like proving a negative. It's impossible to prove an alternate future sometimes. Like, that video would have done better. Trust me, bro. And it's like, I don't know sure. that it would have, but I guess I can buy that it would have. Um, which is why I think that the more effective argument is that uh, <laughs> there's like. To, to aim for the the absolute lack of any kind of respectable input on, on their end, and yet they gain so insanely large amounts of it at the expense of sometimes uh, provable elements. But they're still pretty tenuous, so it gets very complex. Like, the concept of, I don't want them gone. I don't think I want to ban anybody for it. I want to mm -hmm. heavily discourage and arguably shame it. So, like, you know... Uh, react content? Well, I do React content, right? So, like, it's... Uh, I'm trying oh, to think okay, of an sure. example of a time where... You've covered plenty of videos that I I would never have watched. You covering them does not mean that I was going to watch them if you didn't, because uh, mm -hmm. I'm actually there for your input. But there are videos you've covered where I share the sentiment in some of the comments where it's just like, what was the point of that? I was just watching their video, and I didn't even like their video. Like, I want to hear what you have to say. Um, mm -hmm. It's just like an ironic problem because it's it's not stolen views at that point. It's just views that would have, have become existing as a result of expecting something else. You were talking earlier about the ContraPoints one. Is that that's taken down now, is it? Yeah. Because so, every now and then I'll be doing nothing on stream. We just have a video while yeah. I play a game and I was kind of like watching. I don't have much to say about it. But for some reason, my YouTube editor uh, wanted to fuck me hard that week. <laughs> decided to throw that one completely. Well, but it, th th that seems yeah. really interesting to me. The fact that you're you're, you seem to be reacting quite, quite hard to the cause of it being there right now. Is that beyond optics or is it just because you knew people might use it against you? Um... Well, one, it was because it, it's just not like, why would I upload somebody else's video to my channel? Like, that's, there's, there's no. So that's point. kind then, of where I'm at with yeah, all of it. It's like, if I had a friend who was doing it, I'd be like, mm, fucking. And, and, you know, I've heard every argument, right? Hassan said in response to us, that, like, because he found out that Eve have a code and fucking. I think he, he confused us with every frame a painting, which was hilarious because everyone in his chat got really upset about it. But yeah. he, um, he looked at the, the argument of like, when he goes to make food and eat it, he shouldn't be playing a video. And he interpreted that as he's not allowed to leave then. And he's like, what do you want me to do, die? And it was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> no. not watch a thing, yeah. <laughs> well, it, there's so many options. Why don't you just play stuff from your older streams temporarily, funny moments or whatever. You've Fair. done the obvious, which is a BRB screen, but like, you can play stuff from your own shit. You don't have to play someone else's video. And then, of course, because like, uh, someone else I find really interesting about this, because I'm, I'm with you on the, this is so messed up and complicated. You know, like the permission argument, basically, like... If someone gave permission, then why the fuck are you mad? They've already said they're okay with it. I assume you'd agree there are times on Earth where two people are consenting to an act that you actually consider immoral. Um. Oh, that's like the yeah, but this isn't that doesn't matter. You're asking. It's kind of the question of like, can you sell yourself into slavery? Is that like an ethical trade? Uh, sure. If we yeah. can go with something simpler and chiller instead of slavery, something like um, a guy is doing a contracting job and it's an old lady who's just like, I need I need a toilet fixed, and he says, yeah, that's going to be uh, five thousand dollars. When let's say the job going to cost five hundred, and she's like, oh geez, okay, yeah, sure, and you just be like, you'd be like, you can do that, but that seems. 
it seems a bit fucked up. Like it's like, well, she sure. agreed, and you're like, yeah, I know. Yeah, no, no, but... like I, I, yeah, there can definitely be things that are unethical. Why is this not going to this sector over here? Um, but I feel like we're pretty far away from that for React content. I don't think we're in like any super ultra exploitative territory where people are like have an inability to consent because this content well, is so, so hyper. In an yeah. equal way that we can't necessarily prove what video views have been taken away, we can't prove the other, uh, the opposite, right? And so I think a lot of creators probably like Lemino, because you actually brought up that a lot of YouTubers can't even survive being on streams, which is true. Um, mm -hmm. I imagine a lot of them, I don't mean to be rude, but a lot of them can't deal with a lot of social scenarios, and the idea that they're going to take any kind of public action against someone is just like, nah, uh, uh, I'm doing okay. Lemino is doing okay, so is Internet Historian. Plenty of these channels are doing fucking amazingly, whether or not Asmongold or Destiny react to them. And so it's just like, I, I don't think I'm going to get anywhere near uh, DMCAing them publicly. That's probably a very Yeah, I guess, idea. but this is such a huge problem for so many YouTubers. It seems like it would be trivial for It's interesting. Like... I'm not sure it is a huge problem for loads of YouTubers. It's that nothing gets done ever since... I feel like the first time this really blew up was Jinx. I assume you remember that as well. I don't. I know everybody it's, references it, but can you catch me up? Like, what happened with that? It's just a, a YouTube channel that started going really, really, really popular, and all he did was he would just take a video from someone else, sit in the corner, and go <laughs> every once in a while, and that was it. Um, he did all of the ASDF animations, and like he was okay. just like, huh, that's funny. Huh. People were like, holy okay. fuck, and he'd get like, you know, a million views. He was getting to a million subscribers, and the funny thing about that is like, uh, you know, those ASDF videos are still doing brilliantly well, but it, mm -hmm. I, I seriously think it's an intuitive thing. Everyone was just like, that seems fucked up. That guy over there is doing as well as that guy over there, but he's just using that guy over there. That's not right. Mm -hmm. But like arguing it is difficult. I, I would never deny that. But I'm mainly more concerned about the extreme sides. If you turn a 20 minute video into a 40 minute one, I think I'm okay with that. I think that's considered transformative. Yeah, it might the, be like, again, that's fine, you make a new stuff. Interesting that we talked about before is back to that first principles. Like, why do we or don't we like React content? Because that was my, I don't, I don't think you were here when I was making the point, but the, um, my point was that the, a very, very, very transformative content might actually be detrimental, more detrimental to the original than not, right? If somebody watches me do a two hour response video to a 30 minute Ben Shapiro video, they're never watching that 30 minute Ben Shapiro video, right? Why would they? They've already seen my well, whole response to it. I assume we're in a position where it's like trying to define the difference between killing and murder, which is straightforward. This is like, you can do it as long as you're transforming. If you're not, then you can't. Like that is probably yeah, a but then that's My only question is why are we okay with the transformative content? Because like, that it makes it feel like if we're okay with the transformative content, then we're, we don't actually care about harm to the original creator um, that's what it feels like you know i think that that that's something most people would agree with anyway in terms of like there's gonna be harm done to creators who are awful when you cover their anything even you don't have to cover their videos you can do harm to creators but it's harm in and of itself is not a principled issue it's gonna be dependent on the context but in mm -hmm. this case people would say it's undo harm maybe but the, know. you know the counter of course is that there's there's the opposite of that isn't it is undo well not undo but do uh, praise of that channel and possibly engagement. And uh, I know that uh, I'm. this is pretty much my position, and I assume it might be yours, but like Jay's video's conclusion is just credit the person you're responding to and try and please add to it. It's very simple requirements, you know? Because from what I've seen yeah. of the worst, like, it is, it just feels fucking wrong, and I feel like the world would be just fine if you you because you were saying earlier about the the internet historian uh, mining or whatever it was the the hole I'm just gonna say the big hole caves that that video that um what the fuck are you gonna say about it and I, I'm genuinely interested in your answer of just uh, if you feel like you're probably not gonna say anything about it why not watch that in your own time instead of something that you would have something to say about. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on how uh, that was only in response to some people, because some people will say that, like, I wish that my streamer would watch some things, but I wish they'd react more to other things. But like, depending on the content that the streamer is going to watch, like for some things, I wouldn't expect the streamer to have any reaction, especially for like documentary related things. Like, I don't expect like nobody's going to have much of a response to the JFK video unless you're like a JFK conspiracy theorist, like expert. <laughs> right. I wouldn't expect anybody to have. Sure. Um, to it. So I find that one interesting, too. So if you did have something to say about it. Um, then, I mean, I mean, if I can come up with something as an example of what you could maybe say about it, would you want to feel like changing the argument, or would you just be like, well, yeah, maybe I could say that? Uh, um, what I'm referencing I mean, is just, like, maybe the construction of the video, how he presents his arguments, how he argues in general, whether or not we can trust what he's saying based on everything that he's covering, uh, the animations he uses, the artwork, obviously. Uh, the way he speaks is it is it convincing or is it awkward yeah and... i mean you can do that but i feel like at some point it's going to be a meme i because i said before like you pause like wow i really like the voice work here <laughs> like, 
well, again, I, don't know if you I that much I'm with you. Like I, yeah. I would hate it because that's the thing, right? Jinx could just pause once per ten seconds, and go, ha, oh yeah, that's funny. That is real funny. Am I transforming mm -hmm. this? Like he looks around, like does this count? It's like no, I, I only want you to do it if you're actually passionate and you actually have things to say. Of course, it's just that I would opt that if you realize like five minutes in, like fuck, I've got nothing to say. Uh, if you guys are interested in carrying this on, it's from Lemono. It's about this. You know, go ahead. I'm gonna watch it later when because I got nothing to say. Mm -hmm. I would I would way prefer that as an outcome. Sure. I guess um Yeah, it just it comes down to that first principles thing of like why do we or why don't we care about certain types of content, I guess. Um which I still don't know if we've actually like figured that out. Um So uh, what content are you surprised people don't care about? What would it be like the gaming like... stuff? Um what content am I, am I surprised that people don't care about? Yeah, because like, I, I assume you're, you're going with the, the direction that, principally speaking, it sounds like this should have overlap with a bunch of other content that nobody says anything about. Oh, I guess... Oh, no, no. I, for me, I was just thinking the um, from that first principles thing, I'm just... I'm curious what is truly making... Um, is what truly makes people upset. Because I see so many different arguments thrown out and so many different things said. It feels like people are just mad sometimes at like either streamers are making money or they just generally don't like streamers. Because I feel like the, the first principle of things is like, I don't like that my stream is getting harmed, or I just don't like that it's copyright infringement. I don't like, the arguments are all, all over the place. I'm just curious, like, what is the actual, like, fundamental reason why people are so upset? I think most would want to cite theft. It's you're, you're taking something that someone else created and you're using it to benefit in one way or another. And the, whether or not it's with their permission, like I said, we'll go for this example we can say without permission. Mm hmm um, yeah, I guess people, I, that would be an argument. Then I would, I'd make people really mad because the, um, then I, I'm curious about the ad block and the pirating takes that yeah, everybody okay. seems to be really well, keen to defend. If you wouldn't <laughs> mind, I would love to talk about them. So with piracy, sure. um, are you mm -hmm. saying like people should have, uh, they shouldn't be pirating shit if they're going to say that stealing's bad? Probably. Or at the very least, I'm sympathetic towards pirating for people that don't have money for things because you're not right. going to buy it either way. Um, I, I do think that adblock has probably been one of the most destructive things that has like radically shaped how the internet functions right now. Well, cause, um, um, but I think people benefit so much from adblock that they don't ever want to like discuss it. Yeah, I'm with you on. I'm absolutely with you on these. These are going to be things you need to speak to each individual, see what their principles are, and I doubt they're going to hold up. Piracy is one of the best ones ever for proving people actually don't hold to things. Because ultimately, like I've pirated a lot of things even recently for the goal of actually getting access to it. Um, as someone who needs references that go back really far. And uh, I couldn't get L.A. Noir to actually run on my PC. I bought it, wouldn't work, pirated it, mm -hmm. did work. It's these kinds of scenarios that, like, piracy is incredibly important. Um, but there are people who yeah, just pirate I'm gonna, everything. Yeah, I'm not going to disagree there. Like, um, I, pirated, I pirated Game of Thrones uh, after paying for it on HBO because I couldn't figure out how to, like, authorize yeah, from my yeah. phone. Like, yeah, I like, this is fucking retarded. And so, um, but the people who pirate everything mm -hmm. and then say, like, oh, I wish they made, like, more good... Uh, you know, whatever show instead of more of the shit, and it's like you're not even buying the one that you think is good. You're not showing them any support. You're pirating the shit out of it. It's like you should probably. I like to have hard copies of like all of my favorite shows and movies and stuff. But um, so that one is going to be wavy depending on who you're talking to, and you could probably convince them to be better with that. But then you come in between them and their wallet, so it starts mm -hmm. to get more interesting for them, right? But with ad block, so what's um, what's your position on on ad block exactly? Um, I feel like adblock is an incredibly destructive force on the internet that the vast majority of people don't need to engage in at all. They just do it for convenience sake. Yes. Um, yeah, and it is it is probably the number one drain on creator income, or almost certainly the number one drain on creator income over any other thing that's ever existed on the internet. But I think that people like their adblock for understandable reasons a lot. So they try to like mental gymnastics their way out of caring about it. But like, for instance, because it. it it's one of the frustrating takes because people never want to think about it, but like, if you were to pull every single creator on the internet, the ones that hate XQC, Hassan, more than anything else, if you could pull every creator on YouTube and say, you have the option today to either delete React streamers or delete Adblock, what would you do? Like, it would be Adblock in a heartbeat. It would just dramatically change everything with how we engage with stuff on the internet. Um, I think you're right. Um, do you think that their hypocrisy as individuals would have any weight on this argument as a whole? about reactions. Um, well, it's just the thing that's difficult, kind of going back to the beginning, the first principles thing is I just, I don't, I can't tell sometimes what people's arguments actually are. That's the only frustrating Cause thing. Because I'm, Cause I'm like doing the people, same thing as you. People, I've got premium or whatever it's called for YouTube. Yeah, yeah, same, yeah. And I had Twitch Turbo and everything too, yeah. And then I've got like subscriptions to like 
five different fucking um, uh, websites or whatever. Um, but the... Um, Oh, yeah, but, like, if somebody's like, oh, like, I think it's depriving creators of revenue, this is, like, horrible. It's confusing to me. If you, if that's something that you feel so strongly about, why are you putting so much, like, weight onto React streamers that probably have a minimal, if any, impact and not more on things like Adblock, which so, are... This is the thing. Yeah. I've, uh, in the past, said, like, I completely understand people pulling up Adblock with really obstructive and obtrusive ads that get, like, all over everything, but if you feel like you want to support a content creator and you can't send donations you can't like buy whatever merchandise you just like yeah i can't do anything i'm not i'm not important but i do run ad blocker to channels like that seems weird i feel like mm -hmm. you should probably leave that off if you want to help out like that's obviously what would happen um so yeah no i i get that too um it's, it's just that like obviously i'm not useful to talk to on that one because I, I think i'm in line with most of what your positions are for piracy and ad block mm -hmm. which means mostly just comes down to the React to stuff, which I feel like we're mostly on the same page. I'm struggling to find much to complain about. Um, yeah, probably. Like I said, I think that there's um, I I think that there are like reasonable arguments to be made um for why um, what's in this? I think there are reasonable arguments to be made for like how people can engage with React. The three things that I gave earlier, um, it's just like the level of like vitriol and hatred that people have on this particular topic makes me feel like there are other types of arguments that people really want to make but for whatever reason they aren't um and i just think that's very interesting to me yeah um i'd be willing to watch uh because it sounded like you said you'd seen the j video the jxc one did you have any thoughts on it uh, i haven't watched that one yet i can though i can react to that well like i mean <laughs> it would be fucking great if we could react together why not do that um i mean yeah if you want to how I'll long can generate video? your channel some content why not oh my goodness yeah we can show people how it's done yeah, do you want to link me the video? <laughs> sure, do you want to do it in Watch Together, or...? I... it's... that's so hard for me to do. Wait, how does that work? That's just... it just means that we both have control over when it pauses, that's all. Uh... Um... If you want to, yeah, go for it. The only thing I... these things usually, like, lag like a motherfucker for me, so it's irritating. But yeah, we can try it if you want, yeah. Well, yeah, give it a shot. Uh, see what happens. Because this is the thing, I'm... I'd be surprised if you took issue with anything in the video, but if you do, I wouldn't mind talking about it. Hold on, force and clip, one sec. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I suppose people, people want us to it. talk about ad block is not the same thing as stealing content. I agree with that. There is a line between them, but I understand the connection Desi's making, though. Yeah, I mean, Adblock is worse than reacting. It, guys, I don't think you guys realize how unbelievably huge. Perspective philosophy in the chat. I don't want to chat about veganism anymore. <laughs> I don't know how vegans found a way to rope the vegan debate into the fucking abortion debate. It's like my two most hated topics. You know, fucking, I don't want to talk about it. I don't care. Please stop. Oh, my God. Um, if people see the URL to this, is that bad? Will they all be able to pause it? Uh, yes, you need to make sure they can't see the URL. Okay, hold on. Let me Can you like do the thing out. where it pulls it out, or is it when I work for Watch Together? It's hard because like I do um, I do uh, I use two PCs to stream, so this is going to my other PCs, which is hard. Don't worry, I'll figure it out. Hold on. I, well, I, I mean, it'll still work if it's streamer. audio only. Um, I'm a professional streamer. Hold on. Good. I got. Got to get second. people the visuals if you can, right? You should play a video while we're waiting. <laughs> Shut up. <Hold> <laughs> on. One sec. <sighs> I'm reacting to somebody's DMs with my text. Hold on. I'm almost done. Yep, Baru. I mean, if you want me to talk about random shit to keep people around, that's all right. Why do I think you're, why do I always think you're Australian? I don't know. To be fair, it's hard to pinpoint exactly where I'm from, but it would be Wales. 
Oh, I was there a while ago. Britain. You were. How was it? <laughs> Bro. Wait, do you live like in Wales proper or? Yeah. Are you, am I, you have the tiniest fucking roads. <laughs> we have the either. tiniest like countries. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Like there are roads that are narrower than single lane roads in the United States. And these are two ways. Like it's insane. Like I thought I was going to die. I, I, I figured it out by like day two or three, but oh my god, you're, the roads are so narrow, and, and you guys drive so fucking fast. I think I'm spoiled, not spoiled, but like I go to Sweden, bro, in Stockholm, people drive like 45 kilometers an hour at like tops everywhere. I don't even think the cars are even built to go faster than that. Like they're, like they're so slow. And then in, in Bongerland, you guys are flying down these narrow, itty bitty fucking roads. I'm like, holy shit. It's the Dark Souls but, of roads. You're ready for it, I think. I guess. Hold on one second. Okay, let me grab a thing real quick. No Oh, problem. it's Muda! <laughs> the stream hater in chat. Motherfucker. Hold on one sec. How did it come to this? Terrible. Also, hi, Muda. -ha. I love seeing uh, more and more YouTubers getting roped into this insanity. The whole also, react thing. I I know that ABBA wasn't talking shit in chat. I saw him on YouTube chat, okay? <laughs> Mr. Actual, like, React YouTube channel. You better be careful out there. Okay, ABBA. Okay. Boom, boom. Do, wait, do you have perms for my Discord? I don't know. Probably. I'm in there. Oh. Hold on. Probably. Uh, perms for my Discord are a big deal. What do you mean, probably? That's like asking if you have a black card. Well, I'm just, you know, I'm just so important and cool that I don't really check. I just like, assume that I do. Okay, hold on one sec. Who's the UK person? His name UK is... UK person. That's what they asked. Oh, also, Polcat is the official head moderator on Discord now. Just so you guys all know. Give him congratulations. Also, I thought I had to delete the Not Safe for Work memes channel to partner the server, but I deleted it, and I don't think we needed to. So if you were mad that, that channel got deleted, get fucked. Ha <laughs> ha, I deleted it. Okay. Um, we're going to capture this. Boom, boom. Um, okay, uh, let's see if I can do this without fucking it up. Okay, we're here. Okay, go for it. Yeah, all right, let's do it. In November of 2020, I posted a 14 minute YouTube minute YouTube video in which I roast a weird house. It was, when I first released it, one of my worst performing videos for quite a while. It seemed like it was just gonna end up being one of those videos that didn't get seen by that many people, and that's absolutely fine, you know? That is, until completely out of the blue, it was given a huge amount of extra exposure by an absolute legend. I'd never met this person, in fact, I didn't even know they existed before this, but the boost that they gave me almost doubled the video's view count in just a few days. And for that, I would genuinely like to thank the Reddit user who posted my video to r slash videos. You did me an absolute solid. This kind of thing is genuinely really helpful. Anyway, today we're talking about reaction content. Chances are you probably know plenty of creators who react and respond to the work of other creators. And hell, that's something I do plenty. For anyone who doesn't know, I actually started out as a response YouTuber. Be it in a stream or in a fully edited video, I've reacted and responded to a lot of other people's videos in my time. Here's a clip from one of those videos so you can see the kind of thing I do. Dip your balls in Tabasco sauce. Now when I cover other people's work like this, there are a few kinds of etiquette that I feel it's important to stick to. Do you think there's any valuable sort of point of view from the whole gentleman's uh, agreement or unofficial rules or anything like that? Do you find much uh, stake in it, I guess? Like, we, we try to avoid doing DMCAs or shitting on other people's work when they've... Maybe it's very much undo instead of just, like, shooting randomly. Like, do you think there's anything to that, or would you always want to get the more principled arguments? Um, I mean, it's going to depend on what we're talking about, but at the end of the day... Gentlemen's agreements are just an opportunity for people to fucking ruin you if if you're not careful to, to utilize the tools that you have. So like, 
should people be DMCAing people immediately? No, like no. that's probably not a good idea. But like that's a tool that you have if you truly are suffering um, losses at the hands of people, you know, stealing your content. Like I don't think like DM like if this was the case, like let's say it was the case that we all knew absolutely that React streamers were severely depriving or even moderately depriving YouTube uploaders of revenue. If that was the case, and then they reached out and they're like, hey, can you not watch my show on your stream anymore? And they still did it. I think DMCA is 100% okay there. Like, absolutely okay. Like, that's literally what the tool was built for. Um, I mean, but do you, because like, I, I've seen, I don't know if you hold much weight in this, but like, I, I don't want to fucking DMCA anybody, really. Um, and you might be really? like, what the fucking, why? And it's like, I don't yeah, know, I don't want to fucking deal with like, all the shit that comes with it. Uh like maybe it's because of I have a lack of familiarity with doing it. I've literally never DMCA'd somebody. Well, I believe. Oh, you, you need have, to have right? your first time. We should go look for. Um, yeah, we should go look for videos and find something for you to DMCA. We can break your chair right now. I'm sure, somebody <laughs> stole your shit online. But because um, you're obviously highlighting like the first step being like to ask them publicly and friendly. It's like yeah, sure, and keep going. Try and make us think about it. Maybe even make a video about it before DMCAing it. Or do you say that's just that's unnecessary? Just go for it. Yeah, make a video about it. Reach out to them. I mean, like you can DMCA people, and it gives them like a seven day like time period to respond like you can do that as well um so that it doesn't auto strike them but they've got seven days to remove it so but like do you buy that that's something that pulls people back from doing it that pulls people back from doing what dmca and would it pull people back from dmca like Wait, what you, do you, mean? you were saying like the argument doesn't hold any water this is fucking stupid like you should be doing it anyway yeah but it's like do you buy that these people are actually not doing it partly because of that even if I think they, a lot of people probably just don't know how to do it. I think they like they hear DMCA and they think that's the thing you do when you hate somebody. <laughs> like, that, that's that's what I'm saying though. Like there, there's there's yeah. going to be so many people out there that you're like, if they were really mad about this, they'd be DMCA. And I'd be like, well, a lot of them, first of all, don't want to do it. They don't know what repercussions are going to be if they do it, and then they're going to be like, they don't even know. Yeah, how but to I mean, do like this is our like job. This is how we make a living. Like it's probably worth learning. Like sure, no, out. I agree. I I completely mm -hmm. agree. But surely that is a possible explanation as opposed to they're not bothered. Um, I mean, it's such an easy thing to do. If this is the only thing preventing you from doing it, then it sounds like you probably don't care that much. That would be my assumption. If this, I don't know, if this is your livelihood, like, shouldn't you be taking every effort at least to get the easy things out of the way? And DMCA is a pretty fucking easy thing to do. That's like your lowest tier thing um, for getting people to fuck off or something, you know? Yeah, and, and I, I agree with the whole, like, you can just throw one. You don't have to throw more than that. Sure. Um, oh, you could just threaten it, or you could do the one with the seven-day strike option. So get, give them time to remove it. Like, yeah, it's still um something I do think that people like, potentially people like Lamino might uh be like, nah, fuck it. I, there's no point in getting involved in it, especially. And it could literally be that he doesn't know how as well, or never tried and doesn't want to. There's all this stuff that's coming into it that tangles everything up, as far as I'm concerned. But it mm -hmm. would be nice if none of <clears throat> Wait, us. Wait, hold used... on. Yeah. Oh yeah, I agree with you. Can we move into my Discord? I think Abba wants to scream at me. <laughs> <laughs> sure yeah um, if you click my discord you should have access to a room it's called destiny's room okay hold on wait 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 oh mudahar stop <laughs> muda says if they get countersued i think a lot of people are scared fighting richer people in court if you dmca somebody and the other person counterclaims you the choice is yours to go to court that doesn't force you into a court battle Unless something has substantially changed by the DMCA process in the past week that I haven't heard about, if I DMCA somebody and they counterclaim me, they're like, no, I can use it. Oh, well, fuck me. The onus is then on me to go to court. I'm not automatically, like, in court now. Do you see the channel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can jump in. Okay. Oh, God. Mood is there. Oh, we're f Let's do it. I bring him in. All right. Yeah, I texted Mood. I said, get in there. We Good. need some more. Yeah, we, bring the we rest need some of them. Go ahead. Color. Okay. Go ahead, Muda. I'll let you go first since you kicked <laughs> off this whole debacle. It's your fault. I, I think he's still setting up. I'm coming in right now. I'm on a different computer. I'm editing right now, so I'm not like totally in the in the game. But yeah, uh -huh. um, we were talking about DMCA. That's what I said in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, I think the thing with the DMCA is like, from what I understand, um, based on if you file out a DMCA, and I've been DMCA'd a few times throughout my career. Usually, the scariest part about like filling out a counterclaim is that you are literally engaging um you are giving intent that you are going to go into a legal battle and then you know both parties can get in so well the reason why the, the reason why it's an intent is because let's say that i dmca you if i dmca you what i'm basically doing is i'm telling youtube hey 
Mudahar is using my content and I might have to link to it. So I go, look, this is my content. He's using it, okay? So then YouTube mm -hmm. will send you a notice. They'll say, just so you know, we've received a takedown request from the sky. How would you like to respond? Um, it's e you're either guilty and now your channel's got a strike or you can say, fuck you, I do have the right to use this content. Now, if you acquiesce and then you get a strike, then it's over. Or Wait, that's not true. You don't actually get a strike. You can actually choose the way it functions. There's a seven day option and there's an immediate function. No, 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 hold on, hold on, wait, wait. That's if you're the one launching the DMCA, if you're making the initial claim. The person that's making the initial claim can do the seven day option or they can do an immediate strike. That is true. But okay. I'm just doing for the normal ones. The the person that receives the strike, you now have the option of saying, okay, I do have the right to use this con or no, I don't. And then you'll get a strike if they didn't give you seven days to think about it. Right? No, yeah. no, no, no. It's uh, so the, I know the way that you guys are discussing it. So you, so basically party A issues a DMCA strike to party B, yep. party B files a counterclaim, and then yes. it's up to party A after like two weeks Correct. to issue or provide like legal paperwork to YouTube. And then of course it becomes a legal engagement. Yes. yes. But I think that's where the determinant is though, right? Like for a smaller creator is looking at a multi-millionaire right it's like man do i really even want to start a fucking legal battle considering how the legal system is designed like in the sense that if somebody richer wants to just drown you out they absolutely can and it's not wait, even wait, just wait. the money it's like the Hold amount on, of time that's, you spend sorry that's yeah that's not true just because you have we're not talking like patent trolling or some high level like corporate like super crazy shit like hmm. in i would be amazed if a larger content creator that was clearly in violation of copyright wanted to poke the horn in its nest to, to have somebody take them to court over copyright. Now, it's possible somebody could do that, but I would be shocked if that would happen. Yeah, yeah I've been on the internet so long that I wouldn't be shocked if there no, are some stupid no, idiots out there no, willing no, to. No, I don't even believe that most big creators want to spend time doing that kind of legal right. battle, unless they really felt like they had a strong claim, I mean, which I don't think XQC does, mm -hmm. right? So the creators mm -hmm. like that, if you... If you get a copyright claim, you're like, okay, they're going to just it, accept it because yeah. they know they're, they're they're in the wrong in terms of how they're managing yeah. their content. So I don't mm -hmm. even think people are doing the first step. But if you go to, have you ever done a removal request? Me? Uh, no, I've never done a removal request to anybody. Okay, so I can tell you guys, I've done a few of them because sometimes I'll go look at the video and it's like 100% a match, meaning my video is literally 100% of their video. Sometimes even 80, 90. And when I see 80, 90, I'm like, all right, you're not even talking, you're not doing anything. You just you have my video playing and you just sit in the background. So I just yeah. remove them. It's super easy. It's seamless. It's a few clicks. It's not right. complicated. So I give out those strikes. I don't give out strikes. I just give removal requests and they don't lose their channel. Yeah. So I think that is something that you, creators should use if they feel like some people are stealing their content. And you could see all this very easily. So when people say, oh, I don't want to do that because I'm afraid, I just don't buy it at all. Well, that's in the copyright section of the creator studio. I showed this in like a year ago when I talked about this exact same topic. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was when like uh, some of the streamers say, just claim the footage. People do it all the time. And it's like the claiming system is different. I wish the claiming system was a little bit more accessible, but it's pretty much locked to MCNs and like the biggest production studios at the moment like that, you know. If that was the case, like a lot of videos could be claimed by actual creators and then like fucking they could get the revenue. But even when we're looking at that, I, I really wish YouTube had a system where like if like ABBA, for instance, if your video was like 80, 90 percent reacted, the algorithm could shift towards promoting your content over the reactor again. Right. Like um, if that was an option or I don't sure. know how YouTube's back end would do that. But this is so crazy because I just noticed that just pearly things reacted to one of my videos a year or two ago and it was 90 percent of her video. So now I get to remove it. <laughs> Jesus Christ! God damn it! You oh boy! Right now. Well, I mean, the e the ease of DMCA is probably irrelevant compared to what we can talk about now that you two are here. Yeah, yeah well, the... but it is a thing that I would like to point out because like, if there's some huge harm being committed here, it's so easy to DMCA people. Like, I can't imagine why like, nobody's even thought to explore the option if there's so much harm being suffered here, so much injury. Well, we kind of wouldn't. Wouldn't you argue that that is what the goal is with getting it louder and louder to let more content creators know that that is normal and easy to do? But who's getting it louder and louder? It's like people that aren't even affected, right? I mean, people are pissed off by it. Yeah, but they're not affected. I don't know that they need to be affected to be pissed off by it. Yeah, but it's like saying that, like, it's like when a whole bunch of white people got together to say we really need to call brown people Latinx instead of Latino. Okay, yeah, but that, no, but that's because the argument is okay, retarded. Okay, but those people that's are not... like legitimately mentally ill. Let's yeah, that, no, I know, this. but I'm just saying that like, it's like, it's like, when a bunch of, like, when a bunch of white like people get to, together five... for black rights, that's not bad. That's good. Like, is, sure, what... yeah, but I'm saying, I'm just saying it feels like the same four, but also black people want rights too, right? That's, that's my point hits, though. Like, but it hits different when there are four or five YouTubers that always complain about this, but it feels like a lot of the larger content creators and even people who's had their stuff reacted to generally don't seem to care or don't say much about it. 
Like, if it was a whole bunch of people coming and like, yeah, this guy wrecked my video, I hate this, or a whole bunch of people like, yeah, I hate it when this happens, blah, 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 I think it would hit a lot different. But it seems like it's usually people that aren't affected that are saying, like, this is the worst thing ever, and it's so horrible and evil, and it's like, eh. Well, but, like, what if, you know, over time, more and more creators are actually buying the argument that, yeah, this is something that shouldn't be happening. A lot of them probably aren't even aware of how much isn't con contributed sometimes. I don't know that they watch all the reactions, they just know that it's happened and it's on a big channel, therefore it must be good. Uh, maybe, but I, I mean, I, I think as more people get involved, like, I think I, I definitely, it would, I would view it a lot differently, right? Like, let's say, for instance, and I'm not poking any bears here or blending mood or anything, but, like, let's say on day one, let's say that that, uh, the, is it Lemmy No? Is that the guy's name? Yeah. Let's say that Lemmy No would have tweeted out, like, I put all this work on this video, all these motherfuckers are reacting to it, fuck these pieces of shit. Um, then it's like, okay, like, that would definitely, I, I, I could see that. But when it's a whole bunch of people that aren't even involved, I don't know, it just feels a little bit different sometimes, you know? Um, well, I, I don't know. I just like the amount of people being uh, annoyed by it or not. I don't know how mm -hmm. relevant that is. Uh, was figuring out whether or not it's the right thing to do or should be stopped or should be shamed or should be DMCA, you know? Well, I think it's relevant because the principles are all over the place in terms of like who actually. Yeah, you got to cut through the noise. I, I yeah. So when the principles are over the place, then I'm looking at like, well, who are the injured parties and are they like ultra mad? And if they're not, then it's like, I don't know. I don't care that much about it. But I mean, it could still be a bad thing. Like, well, you are correct. Like, other people can point out, like, well, hold on, this is a bad thing. Even these guys aren't complaining about it. But it, it just seems like here the injury is so hard to even see. Like, it's hard to know if things are even negatively affected. So the the outrage, like, when I see the outrage in response to this, I'm thinking, like, holy shit, there must be like a new set of machinima contracts or something for people to be this mad. But then it's like, well, some streamers react to some videos in some ways that are kind of unethical. And I think some people might be experiencing losses, and that's why streamers are literally the devil. Well, and it's like, I, I, I think it's ju it just looks like the most like influencer thing possible and that we already have a perception of influencers and content creators that they're lazy and they don't work hard for what they do. And now we're watching somebody go to the bathroom while they play another content creators <laughs> yeah. content and adding nothing of value and getting like making money off of it and entertaining their audience. So it's just like, it, it's almost like a parody of itself in a way. And that's, I mean, that's why fine, it's so inflammatory. But that's, yeah, but you understand, like, that's a fine argument. Like, if somebody is irritated by, like, these guys are doing no effort and making money and blah, 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 that's okay. But the problem is, this is where the virtues are. When people are coming like, this is destroying small creators. Like, no, it's not. You just don't like the fact that people are being lazy as fuck and they're making tons of money off it. But I think that argument is fair. But when people start moving into all the other arguments, it's like, okay, well, now it doesn't really make as much sense anymore. And the level of outrage isn't, like, matching the, um, the, the, the actual crime, I guess, is what, yeah. Sure. I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm yeah, not I'm, I'm more than happy to say it's been overreacted to, but the problem I think is that it just <laughs> festers. <laughs> reacted to, get it? I, that's what I was going for. Um, too, too dry, probably. But the, yeah, the as the years have gone by, nothing gets done about it. Uh, Jack Films is one of the better responses to it that I've seen over time. And his newest video, he basically like laments that apparently things are never going to change because they're only getting worse, arguably, and more broad. His attempt now is to react to the reactions and grade them. Which I thought was hilarious. Uh, maybe it'll yeah, make a difference. Yeah, but I feel like when we say nothing is getting better and nothing is changing, I feel like it's because it's just not that much of a problem. Because there are so many incredibly easy ways for this to never happen again. Like, if 10 or 15 YouTubers got together, like, we're going to start DMCAing people, or, um, like, it would be over. Like, it would only take, like, three DMCAs on, like, across like two big Twitch channels for people to be like, whoa, we're not reacting anymore. Like when the record labels came down and started getting people in trouble for listening to music, bro, nobody on Twitch streamed a single well, fucking copyrighted song for like three weeks because everybody a, was so scared. It's yeah. a question then. Uh, yeah, but the difference there is like the record labels are like multi-billion dollar organizations. And yet they did the exact same process that's available to a guy making 50 bucks a month on his YouTube channel. You just file a DMCA. Yeah, but I mean, legally, if a multi-billion dollar organization is going to stamp out a multi-million dollar streamer, that's like fucking pennies to them, man. That's like... The, no, no, but the I mean, DMCA hell, doesn't cost it, you. It doesn't cost you any money. You just it's yeah, free. But what, yeah, but the day you go into court, though, that's when it starts costing you fucking arms and legs. You know. Yeah, but you only have to go to court if you want to. If you're the one filing the DMCA, the other party can't force you to go to court. Um, out of curiosity, would you uh, encourage someone like Lamino, even if he had no problem with it, to DMCA? I'm not. I'm not fully convinced that there's even necessarily a problem. Um, I don't think I would ever encourage people to DMCA, but I would say that like 
if it's a severe problem, if it's as severe as some people are saying it is, well then yeah, of course, if that's running. Like if you truly feel like you're being deprived of like 10, 20, 30, 50% of your revenue and like and you tell a streamer like, "Bro, stop watching my shit. You're just you're stealing my content." And he doesn't listen, then yeah, I would say fucking fire away. But like my guess is the vast majority, 99% of React streamers or YouTubers would probably fuck off if other YouTubers came out like, "Hey, just letting you guys know, if people are watching my shit, I'm probably going to start DMCAing it cuz I think it's negatively affecting my channel." Like easy. And I, I think people would just stop. I don't think you'd ever have to file like a single DMCA. People would just stop doing it. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, um, it's it always seems like an overreaction of, to a lot of people to do a DMCA. So maybe that's the thing that we've got to work at is encouraging people that that's an okay process. I something. mean, I could probably ask every person in this, in this call right now, and I think you would all agree, like Muda, if I sent you a message and I said, listen, if you ever show a clip of me on your fucking YouTube channel again, I'm going to fucking DMCA you. Like, you might make a video talking about it, but I bet you'd probably be scared of showing anything on your fucking channel. No? I know I would say be. It again, I would say it again, sorry. If I were to message you and I was like, Mood, if you show a clip of me ever on your YouTube channel, I'm going to start fucking DMCAing you. I don't ever want my shit on your channel, right? You might talk mm -hmm. about it, but I don't know if you, would you actually risk it, like starting to throw clips up? I, it would frighten the fuck out of me. I'd be, I'd be like, well, fuck it. I'm just not going to show Wait. any of this shit. I mean, like me people, though. If anybody threatens yeah. me with litigation, I never talk about that because fucking any litigation, I, I, I just send that to the lawyer. Mm -hmm. Like, legitimately, I take that shit so fucking seriously. Yeah. But, like, correct me if I'm wrong, though, there isn't a disagreement then, because you seem to be conceding that it's worth DMCAing as long as the creators feel so. Me? Well, I mean, like, that. No, Destiny. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a, a. It's, that's, like, literally what the tool is built for. Yeah. yeah so if you really feel like you're getting on, fucked over. Uh huh. Yeah. I, I don't, because, like I said, I probably. I'm not sure if I would. I'm not sure what scenario would make me do it. There's probably going to be one. But the, uh, <laughs> if Lemino did it uh, today with, like, XQC and the others, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't judge him for that at all. I'd be like, yeah, makes sense. I and want the, to ask a different question though, because I think I think we want to focus on like the big creators being able to do this. But I think a lot of this really kind of started off with was Sniper SS Wolf and what she does on yeah, TikTok. Yeah. I think it's very different when it's cross-platform because my understanding is doing a DMC strike for things that are cross-platform is actually rather difficult. It has been in my experience. So I think for a lot of the creators that she's ripping from, which are smaller creators or people who are just doing stuff on TikTok and grabbing their videos and then doing compilations herself, like would you say your only restitution or solution for that destiny is DMCA. I mean, you. I don't know why it's difficult. Why do we think it's difficult to DMCA people cross-platform? Uh, in my experience, having tried it, uh, it hasn't been effective because, like, proving that you're the copyright owner is, is rather difficult. Whereas on YouTube, if it's on your channel, then they can cross-reference that with whatever it is that you're trying. But if it's on a different system, they have no way of knowing who it belongs to. My so my understanding is, if you want to qualify for safe harbor provisions, you don't require somebody to prove they're the copyright owner. What? Because this is why you sign the, I'm pretty sure it's an affidavit under penalty of perjury, I believe, because when you're signing the affidavit, you're saying, I swear, like legally or whatever, I swear this is my content. But I don't think you have to actually go through a formal process to prove it. They might ask you to link to it to discourage people from trolling with it. Um, but yeah, like, because it looked like I when think, I looked no, at the... But it I Go think ahead. if it's up to you to like risk taking the lawsuit, because you're right, like party A sends a DMCA, party B sends a counterclaim, it's up to party A to sue, right? Yeah. So I think the scary part is it's like, okay, let's say that like fucking you had a really small creator, the guy's like fucking living paycheck to paycheck pretty much on the platform. So he knows that he's in the right, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, goes up against a bigger streamer, the bigger streamer files a counterclaim. Now it's really a roll of the dice on the smaller guy's part or mm -hmm. really anybody's part to like go to court, get a lawyer, um, immediately, like they're already financially down and then they're even further down because of it. And like the problem with suing YouTubers and why I absolutely say suing each other is never the answer is because one day it'll just set really bad precedent. And then like a lot of companies will start taking advantage of that bigger organizations. I mean, literally the last 48 hours, I don't know if you guys ended up getting one of these, but you had the world record, like Guinness Book of World Records and your fucking metadata, you were getting like hit with copyright strikes and everything. So again, when lawsuits get handed out and like precedent gets set, I just don't really want bad precedent. And honestly, YouTubers suing YouTubers is just like a landmine. I guess I just I disagree because this doesn't it doesn't feel like bad precedent. Like this feels like if you like court is our legal system is a good thing. DMCA is a good thing. We want to be able to protect our copyright. We want to be able to sue people. I don't think we should shy away from these tools when they're the most appropriate like place for restitution, right? Or, or yeah. like yeah. Well, they're I'm just, with you on that, and I think that maybe the part of the problem here is to encourage people that it is easy, straightforward, and that you'd be right to do it in a lot of these scenarios. Sure. Or at the very least, like as a step one, like make your will known instead of it being like Muda and the Dark Viper AU, um, the guy that wears adult diapers or whatever, instead of it just being 
like the same like three or four people complaining on Twitter, like if the creators themselves that are being affected would come out like, hey, I hate this, I don't like this. My guess is that this type of react content would stop like overnight. People would stop doing it. It would be immensely unpopular. YouTubers and probably other streamers would unite against you. Um, and like, I think even your own audience would be like, yeah, it's probably shitty that you're just like ripping this. Content. Like I, I genuinely think that's how it would go. I don't think people are saying there'd be a huge backlash from streamers, but I, I mean, I think most streamers realize that you're on a free fucking ride when you just put a dude's video on and then you like walk away for like 30 minutes or whatever, you know? Oh, then. <laughs> like I think even with the DMCA, the intent of like certain streamers who like, like for instance, like when, um, when they put on like a movie from like Metro Goldwyn Mayer, or, like Universal Studios, and it's like that doesn't get uploaded onto YouTube. It's like they know that if they get hit with a DMCA from a big player, it's bad for them. But if they get hit by a YouTuber or like somebody on their like financial level or below them, they know that they can, they can win in the legal it. Yeah. system. You no, know? I don't. I super don't believe. If that. that was the case, why didn't they re-upload? They're like, why didn't XCC upload yeah, the Dark Knight to his channel? Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. I don't think anybody wants to fuck around with DMCAs with anybody. I think if you were a small content creator and you rightfully DMCA'd XQC, I don't think he'd fight it. I think he would eat the strike and just move on. Yeah, but he definitely understands that there's got to be a dramatic difference between like the Dark Knight and someone's video on YouTube. Well, there is because those people enforce their copyrights more aggressively. But like, just imagine that. And I'm like, I, you guys, I feel like we all know this, right? Just if you think about the the upsides and downsides as a creator, like, imagine you do that. Imagine some smaller content creator like legitimately DMCA's your shit, and you're like, you know what? Fuck this guy. Take him a quarter of you. Let's see if he takes me a quarter. And then you counterclaim, and then you wake up the next morning, and this dude's on Twitter with fifty thousand likes saying, "Destiny counterclaim my legitimate content that he stole and uploaded on YouTube. I only make six hundred dollars a month. Can you guys please donate to me?" By the way, I'm black and trans. Like, bro, your career is over. That guy's gonna raise like fifty billion fucking dollars to bury you and your entire family and your children's children in legal costs. I, I just don't think any streamer would, would risk it. it. It would be over if somebody legitimately is DMCAing you. I don't think you're ever counterclaiming. You're just gonna eat the strike and move on. Now, if I'm wrong, fuck it, dude. Listen, you know what? R listen, Mudahar, hello. You yeah, hear yeah. me? If I'm yeah. wrong on that, okay. If there is a small streamer that legitimately DMCA is a large streamer and that streamer counterclaims and it's like an obvious blatant fucking content rip, I will donate $10,000 to their fucking uh, litigation, okay? I will make that. Well, I'll donate right 10 now. grand to the litigation too. There you go. Hey, you got the, right here, you got the fuck React Streamers litigation fund, 20K deep already, okay? Yeah, I, I just, I don't think it'll happen, but here you go. You take this one to the bank, react to it, Dark Viper. You can store this in your adult diaper right here. Boom, okay? 20,000. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think Abba was saying something before I cut him off. Sorry, go ahead. No, I, I didn't see nothing. Oh. You on board with calling like it theft? with Viper or something? I don't know this. I, I like both of you guys, so I'm like, you guys have beef with Viper or whatever? All I heard is he, he wears adult diapers, which I, I was really lost by. Oh, Destiny clearly likes Doc Viper. He's very friendly with him. Does he actually wear adult diapers? Is that fine? Let me tell you this. Why the fuck does Dark that matter? Viper, <laughs> Dark Viper, he actually thinks that The Matrix Reloaded and Revolutions were both better than the first Matrix. That's all you need to know about Dark Viper. Okay, okay that's... Mm, it makes it difficult to treat him as human, but we can, I think. We can get through this. I, mean, I thought Matrix 4 was peak. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I was so ready to give a contrarian take on that movie. I was, I watched like after the first 20 or 30 minutes, I was like, you know what? I don't think this will be as bad as people said it was. And then I think it was like around time seven or eight, Neo used that like weird boom move. And I was like, this is the dumbest movie I've ever seen in my life. I lost hope for giving my contrarian take. It was awful, but it was self aware, <sighs> therefore good. Okay, so I'm going to ask you guys a different question. So, what Go. is a, a, a point where you feel like a reaction is transformative? Because I feel like that's fairly. I don't think it's completely subjective, but I think there's some element of it. So I'm curious for you guys, what point do you feel like a reaction or even streamers having that on screen is acceptable? Um, yeah. Probably go with like the legal definitions of fair use are pretty strong for what makes something transformed. Yeah, the like four changing the experience. Is pretty strong. Well, I, I kind of look at the way that, you know, the H3 golden era almost when he was doing like reaction content. I kind of look at that as like almost the peak of it. Um, You know, enough where like... Uh, I go back to like watching the previous video or like, you know, I actually dig deeper into the content, I guess. So, okay, so if you want to watch the re original, then you feel like it's acceptable? Uh, well, that's, but that's the issue. A transformative yeah. thing won't necessarily, like, there are going to be some transformatives that'll make you never want to watch the original. I think sometimes right? they can replace them, but it's ethical. Like, uh, I mean, the replacement in the sense that the video stands on its own, like, there's enough, yeah, like, you wouldn't content. need to see the original because maybe it's a video about something that happened and then you cover it and you give way more information, like, dwarfing yeah. it. Mm -hmm. 
This is why I said like it we need more. It also really depends on the kind of, of content that you're reacting to as well. Too, I was reading in the Stanford Legal Dictionary that uh, when it comes to fictional versus non-fictional events, obviously there's a lot more leeway given, and that's why like a lot of news uh, reactions and a lot of people who cover the news or discuss politics get away with a lot more because they're in you know the covering of real events, and it's more it's more leeway in terms of news reporting in terms of the fair use angle. So. I don't know, man. There's a lot of tests. It depends on what kind of content. Well, I assume we all concede it's a blurry line where where it actually exists. It's complicated. It can go one way or the other really easily, depending on how much people are saying and what they're saying. Because, you know, a lot of people go by time code, right? Like, if the original's 20 minutes and yours is 50, uh, yeah, that seems like it should be I mean, when people okay. say, like, if it's a 20-minute video but the reaction is 50 minutes, I'd argue what is the content... Like, what is the nature of the commentary? If it's just like screaming yeah. into the fucking void, like obviously not. But if it's, let's say like an engineer reacts to like an actual engineering, like, like you know. Absolutely. Fucking, yeah. you know, well, and that's, there's okay, a and, huge and like, industry right now with uh, shorts and everything else where someone will just re-upload a short and then put their face there yeah. pointing to the thing and being like, I think this is interesting. And now it's on their channel and they get all the revenue for it. And it's insane. Is there any revenue? Oh, I'm not even going to ask about that. But I was going to say, if I see a number on YouTube and I see like 70 or 80% of the original content is like the length of the video, mm -hmm. then, like that always makes me kind of jump out a little bit. I'm like, how did you watch 80 to... How is 80% of your video someone else's video? I think that's when it gets a little bit weird. Damn. Um, but that's just a number, and obviously, I mean, I've, I've seen it happen. Hassad is one of the worst for it, while also being one of the best. He's like one of the better reactions at his best. I, I don't appreciate the commentary, obviously, not in terms of insight, but the breaking up of the video and what he has to say in response to things can be really good. But then sometimes you'll just play it in full and doesn't give a shit. I know that Denim's when I watched one of her streams, she was like getting ready, having food, and getting dressed, and she just played Kitchen Nightmares or whatever. It was just they were just playing. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, I gotta get my audience in, I gotta get them ready. And it's just like, what the fuck? I think yeah. when it's used as like a babysitting tool Absolutely, versus like yes. actually being yes. critiqued, that's the real like difference. I think that's what kind of burns people, you know? Um, like I'd never like Destiny is you react to a lot of stuff, but I've seen reactions and like everything is always related to political stuff or Well, you that's know, what you see uploaded on my YouTube channel, but my stream sometimes it's literally just babysitting time. <laughs> yeah, Rude. depending on what I thought. Oh, at least you admit it. At least you admit it. No, but like what's up with the babysitting right? time, like, yeah. It I've maintained it. I'm like, if you stream, if you like, if you're watching something on a live stream, right? I don't think that's inherently bad. I, I defend, but like when you're uploading it to the same platform and competing it with the same metadata, that's when it gets a little bit hazy. I'd still um, probably push again, against streaming that. But uh, yeah, I mean, everyone <laughs> has a different like tolerance to it. Yeah. I was going to ask you, um, what's this, explain the ad block argument to me because you were just like, ad block is way worse. So why, why, why aren't people concerned about that? Is that what you're saying? Oh yeah, it's just it's surprising to me how many people are so keen to defend adblock when I feel like adblock is the number one source of like depriving creators of revenue of like anything that exists on the internet. But people seem to not care about adblock at all, which I think is kind of funny. But. I don't know, maybe maybe I'm weird about this, but I don't expect like every viewer to provide me with financials or you know some kind of financial return when they're using this stuff. It's like <laughs> when I see YouTube premium revenue, I don't get excited because I know it's less than ad ad revenue. So I always feel like people either by watching or those who can afford to watch ads or who don't mind watching ads, they contribute. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, some people don't pay for the Patreon. Like I'm perfectly fine with people enjoying the experience of having to participate at every level or every tier financially. I feel, for me, that feels like very distinctly different than someone else ripping my content and then re-uploading it for their own financial gain. Like is one worse for me financially? Sure. But I don't think I have the expectation that everyone who watches my videos are going to be contributing to me financially. I guess that's just really weird for me because then you like the entire position is that you're not actually ever upset that you're losing something. You're just mad that somebody else is gaining something with your work. Is that uh, generally, not, is that not valid ahead. though? I don't, know, I don't know. Is it? Yeah, I, I feel like we, we, we get mad at a lot of different things that people do in life that don't necessarily affect us whatsoever just because we see it as being a negative. Or, mm -hmm. I don't think I have necessarily got an issue with that. But yeah, I, I, I'm with you on we need to be clear on what thing we're tackling at any one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm not thinking about the harm. Like, if I'm being very honest with you, when I go to my copyright section, I look at a lot of people re-uploading my stuff. I think like the vast majority of them are not making a substantial amount of money off of it. Um, mm. I, 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 to me, I feel like someone's stealing the work that I did for their own gain, and that's what pisses me off, even if it's a small amount. Uh, but it's not about uh, the my, my, it's not it's not the financial loss that I'm pissed about. That's not that. Interesting. I guess I, like I wouldn't like if I was losing money because of something somebody was doing, that would probably bother me. But if people are just making money off what I'm doing, but I'm not losing anything for it, 
I don't know why I would care. Sorry, repeat that. If somebody is if somebody's gaining off of my stuff, but I'm not losing anything off of it, I don't know why I would care. No, they are the, the the gaining portion of it does matter a bit, but it's not a lot. It's not it's not the most for me. It's the fact that they're they're really stealing. Even if I'm not negatively impacted, for me, it's like a, a principal thing as well that really bothers me about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hmm. I think as a content so you're, creator, you're, you're a I, socialist. You're okay with sharing the fucking. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if there's a way that people could use my content and then everybody becomes millionaires, like, I guess I wouldn't be t- too mad about that. But I, to me, if you do stuff for your own content, you make an effort or you put in thoughts and then it's like your ideas. Disney. How would you feel if everybody was just ripping off your takes without ever crediting you or ever doing that? I, I know, know what I think a lot of people do. <laughs> oh, As if people yeah, don't I, do I, that I, already. <laughs> oh, hold on. Hold on. I, know, I know some people do, but if it happened enough where people were even getting a lot of notoriety or fame off it, would it not bother you to some degree? Yeah, it does bother me. I get hella triggered when people do that on shows and they don't fucking credit me. Yeah, I see but, you. I see you complaining here in your chat all the time. Oh my god, here comes a destiny take. All right. True. Although I will say, generally, um, well, actually, no. Hold on, I'll fight against that. I'll qualify that a little bit. Generally, that only triggers me when the person ripping my view also shits on me and like calls me a fascist or something. That's usually when it triggers me. Or if somebody does a really poor job at representing a view. So like if I feel strongly about a particular argument and then somebody else represents that argument, but they do a really bad job and now that argument looks worse, those are actually the only two times it triggers me, I think, yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, then I'll engage a lot of plagiarism in that case without any issues. Well, well. Anybody else? Anything else? No. This is your time to shine, guys. No. I honestly don't think it's that big of a deal. I think that's kind of the thing that, like, probably is the most annoying, is that, like, the, uh, the level of emotional outrage, I feel like, doesn't match what's happening. Like, I think it's fair to get annoyed at influencer culture or streamers acting entitled or being lazy and making too much money. I think those are all, like, fair things to get upset about. But the level of outrage seems like a massive crime has been committed, and I don't understand how people can be so fucking mad. I still think but, this is a I mean, cultural thing. To be thing fair, of, a lot of yesterday was just me getting mad at the fucking responses I was getting from XQC. I was like, there's just no way yeah, which like, makes I sense, but to argue like this. This has been going on for like <laughs> years and years and years. People, oh. like, it comes up every once in a while, and everyone's like, oh, is this still happening? And like, I think they get angrier every time. I, I, I partly think that's very much to do with that. I just think the chest beating behavior that I had to witness yesterday kind of fucking like that rubbed me off a little. Nah, so I got that's a little not bit what it is. Be it. honest, Muda. You think, you think XQC kind of fucking lazy, and you know what? He's not entirely deserving of his following. Be honest. Ooh. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I, th- I, I definitely get that vibe as well, too. But it's like the chest beating when you think you're right and like you're trying to like say little bro to me and all this fucking stupid shit and like all these Reddit insults. Yeah, it's going to piss me off a little bit. I'm going to get personally invested. Yeah. Damn. Um, it's all Reddit good. insults. He said. I mean, it is. Like, dude, Reddit is down the hall to the left. That's the entire fucking response that I was getting. I was like, he, the guy was not trying to understand what I was saying. And that's just, it's like, it's like that. I think that also, like, I, I don't know, Abba, shit, that pisses you off too, right? Like, I think that pisses everyone in this room off if we get shit like that. Wait, what did, <laughs> what, what did he say? I have no idea. Well, he was just, he was like trying to fucking come at me. He's like, hey, little bro. Hey, listen, soy boy. Listen, you don't understand what's going on. You made this out of jealousy, this post. And I'm like, I'm actually talking about impression cannibalization, which is a real thing on this platform. I literally was like giving my point out there. And the guy was like bringing it all the way back to like, oh, you know, it's all about money. You're making a money argument. I'm like, dude, I didn't make a money argument, period, about the situation. I could give less of a shit. Like, even in a discussion, I'm like, we're both very well-off individuals. It's not really about the money. It's about the long-term channel growth and, like, again, the principle of it all, right? Mm. I See, I, I, I think I might actually agree with XQC. I don't think it's entirely jealousy, but I do think a lot of this is just based off the fact that these are big content creators who appear to be lazy. And I think people, it just rubs them the wrong way. I don't think it really has that much of a negative impact on the creators originally. Um, that's and, and this is and, my, and, and that's my honest yeah, opinion. Yeah. I, I really don't mm-hmm. think it has a, a real substantial impact on the creators that are are being quote unquote leached off of. I think a lot of it's just XQC yeah, and, and and Sniper SS Wolf look lazy and they're making mm-hmm. so much fucking money off it. Yeah, I agree with that take one hundred percent. That's why I said I think that was the first thing I said here. I don't know if I said it to you or um, or I might have said it to Mahler, but like if people were just like, I think it's fucking wild that a guy can sit in front of his fucking computer and have 20,000, 10,000 people watching, and then he cashes out $10,000 for the fucking day watching videos that other people spent like six months making. 
that's understandable. That I can totally see people getting ticked off at that. That's fine. But the virtue signaling comes in when they're like, you're destroying small creators. I'm like, no, probably not. It's probably not happening, okay? But if you're mad because people are being lazy and they get paid way too much for entertainment related jobs, I get that. I think that's fair. But yeah, people hype it out into so much well, more. So do you consider it unethical or not then? Do I consider it unethical? Um, yeah. Do I, is it unethical? Like it's an easy yes for me. Uh, yeah, it is. It's not a big deal, but it's unethical. But uh, I'm like, I would, I'm like, I think I'm like 50 50 totally on the fence about it. I think I could be pushed over one way or another. Here's what I will say if creators make their will known that they don't like it and people do it, it's 100% unethical. Um, but if there's no harm being done into anybody and the people don't even care or even know about it, is it unethical at that point? Do you, I don't know, do you think sure. XQC and Hassan give a shit, a single shit, whether or not it's harmful? Um, do they give a shit? The answer is no. probably not. Well, I don't think they can afford they, to. I don't think they I don't think they give a shit, but I think if if creators were complaining about it, I think they'd stop just for the optics. Yeah, but that, right? exactly. So it's really mm -hmm. like from their POV, they're just going to gain for as long as they can gain. Like as soon as they can't, they'll be like, "Eh, fuck it, whatever." They never cared about any of these people. Probably true, but that's true of all of us on the internet if we're being honest, no, right? No, that's not true of me. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that you shit. Don't think so? No, I like think people play, I think people play dangerous games with copyright, especially on the internet since the inception of the internet. Um but yeah, I, w I want to give Muda a chance to defend himself. You really feel like there's a, a, a real financial implication for some of this reaction stuff? Because I feel like we've all been arguing this and we kind of maybe disagree on you at that point, but I want to hear you make that case. I honestly believe, like, so when I talk about long-term channel growth, obviously, yes, part of that comes with money and there may be a financial loss that's implicated from somebody that gets consistently reacted to and there's no organic growth headed to their end. Um, when I think about, like, impressions, right? Like a finite group of impressions. Every time I go into the home page or the recommended tab, in the last uh, the 60 days, YouTube has provided me a lot of channels that uh, have had like a thousand views, 2000 views, right? And I've seen channels go from like 200 subscribers, to, like 20, 30,000 subscribers with really good attrition rates because the kind of subscribers that they're building are organically pushed to them by YouTube because they're capable of like analyzing, you know, what kind of content works for me you know like mm -hmm. i watch a lot of gaming retrospective stuff and a lot of watch a lot of gaming like these two hour long gaming videos um and uh i watched like popular creators first but now i'm watching a lot of these smaller creators who are like a thousand two thousand subs and i think when youtube does that it's really cool i think it's a shame when that recommended slot that could have promoted a thousand you know view channel gets replaced by a reactor i think that's a net harm um but yeah when i'm talking wait, about why? Long -term wait, wait 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 why before he breathes because back. it's like because it's usually the same video I've already watched with like somebody that's barely putting any effort into it or like adding any commentary <laughs> on top of that, right? So this is um, something that, is well, place... this, is, this is something I'd be really curious about, and I'm agnostic right now because it go either way. So because I could see that argument going the exact opposite without having any mm -hmm. data to know, like. What if it was, so like, for instance, let's say there's a video on a guy's breakdown of a Dark Souls boss and how that relates to Nazism, okay? Maybe somebody watches a Hassan reacts to that, right? And then they watch it. Mm -hmm. The idea that if they didn't see Hassan react to it, would that video ever actually show up in their recommended feed if they're not usually Ooh. watching that type of content? Because that's going to be the first question. And then the second question is, let's say that type of stuff never would show up in their recommended feed. Do you think that that being on Hassan's channel might make it more likely that other content from that person will show up into the recommended feed. For instance, if I react to a Jordan Peterson thing and then you click on my channel, now Jordan Peterson's getting recommended to you just because I reacted to him. Yep. I've never oh, seen oh, that oh, in oh, terms oh, of cross oh, oh. genre myself, but I think when it comes to, cause you and Jordan Peterson are in the political space. So I mm -hmm. think there's uh, the algorithm might benefit the fact that I'm watching one political creator, therefore it might tag another political creator that you're reacting to in it as well. I don't know how much that works for cross genre stuff. Cause I haven't seen that myself in terms of, um, you know, my personal experience, but I'm sure, sure. it could happen. Yeah, actually. Yeah, I'm just saying that, that I feel out. like, yeah, I feel like both scenarios are plausible, which is why I think the data is like really important on this. Cause I could totally see that. I could see like me, let's say that I do the worst, the most egregious react to some movie streamer that does a really interesting analysis on Interstellar. And so I watch it and I straight rip it and it goes to my channel. Destiny reacts to Mauler's one hour Interstellar analysis, <laughs> right? Even if it's a straight rip, the worst react ever, the most blatant hyper. So if you click that on my channel, now there's 250,000 people watching that. What are the chances then that in their sidebar, other Mauler stuff starts po popping up now? And now he's actually benefited from me 
like doing a horrible react to his content. Well, this right? is, now, I'm not saying that does happen, but I'm saying that that seems just as plausible as it happening the other way around, or even more plausible, because I don't know how often random small videos are gonna show up in your feed. But, but this, that would this is like a, you know. absolutely, like I've already conceded on this, and I assume the others would as well. We don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to prove all of this, but if mm -hmm. it were proven, if some wizard told us like absolutely the channels suffer, how much of a difference do you think that would actually make to all the people who are doing it right now until people make enough noise? I, again, to the people themselves, I'm not sure, but if they if we knew that they actually suffered, I think that there would be a, a big movement on it and it would be incredibly unpopular very fast. Uh, even if it benefited the viewers and the streamers, I think a really good example of this is, do you remember G2A and Kingwin? I do, yeah. They're old names, yeah. I think oh, those- Oh, key websites? Yeah, They're still going, think, aren't they? Games? Yeah. They might still be going, but they fell dramatically out of public favor when stories started coming out about how, how they abusive the keys, they yeah. were. Yeah, that got really unpopular. And that's what that like, I, well, yeah, so uh, I remember when I didn't have the money, I bought like a fucking key for Elder Scrolls Online through there, and it got revoked after like three months. Uh, it literally got advertised to me, I think, by PewDiePie, like the website. Like it was like, oh <laughs> shit, it's. Yeah, that's. It was because it was like a sponsor business. I'm like, oh, game's a little bit cheaper. Okay, that doesn't sound weird at all. And then I found out they were literally using like credit card or allegedly using credit card fraud and like a bunch of other fucking shenanigans and to so get these cheap games. This is almost we're coming back to paid by exposure, right? That it's good enough uh -huh. and that you should be okay with it. I heard you say earlier that, uh, Destiny, that if you found out like they're going to cover your video without any commentary on Joe Rogan and it's like, do you want to be paid for that or do you want the, you know, just as it is and you're like, I don't fucking need the money, that's going to be great. It's like, but would you do that in reverse if you were covering, you know, something without any commentary uh, or rather, that offer, would you ever give that offer? Would you ever say to somebody, I'm going to pay you no, an exposure? So, no, no, no. Me personally, I don't generally do that, but I hold myself to a decently high ethical standard when it comes to paying people that I work with, generally. And I think so you the, think that's like above and beyond I ethical? Proven. I think it's above and beyond, though. Because like, what, this is what I said before, and this is what I, this is what I stated earlier. The paid and exposure meme, paid and exposure is not bad because you can never be paid an exposure. Because sometimes being paid an exposure is amazing. Paid an exposure is bad is because normally the people that want to pay you an exposure are either hardcore exploiting you or they have no exposure to give you, right? Like, again, like if Joe Rogan was like, Destiny, like you guys can come on our program, but like I'm not even going to cover your flights, bro. Um, and you might mm -hmm. have to pay like a $20 fee to park. Like I'd be like, bro, I'll, I'll pay for your parking that day. So this, like, let me on your show, you know? Yeah. This could be a difference, <laughs> uh, I guess, between you and I. But if I was like a, the most yeah. famous musician in all of forever and I have someone intro for me, like a just mm -hmm. a random with, with no like engagement at all. I like you can play one song and then it's all my stuff. And I said, like, I assume you don't give a shit about being paid. You're going to get big like engagement offers. Cause of it. Like for me personally, I'd be like, no, I'll pay them. Even if it's literally like 50 quid, but, like the actual like fair payment for what they're going to be doing for whatever the situation is. I want them to have that and the exposure. I consider that base level. I don't yeah, consider that's that the more ethical thing. I wouldn't say that baseline. I think that's a good thing to do. And I think most people in those industries will do it because we all hopefully remember how hard it was starting out. Well, yeah, but like, I, I know, like, yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like it's base level because you are paying them for the job that they're doing. Whatever exposure there is is whatever there is. That's the, something they get to benefit from. I don't think we should then reverse engineer and start saying like that exposure is gonna be so good. I'm pretty sure. I'm mostly sure. Therefore, I don't have to pay you. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it just, I feel like it really depends, like, it's just hard, what do you run that back on, right? So, like, for instance, like, I, like I've like i milked a lot of content out of ABBA, and arguably both of you guys, um, or all three of you, I guess, technically, by being here, like, should, do you think streamers or YouTubers should pay, like, appearance fees or guest fees for people that, like, I feel like we've consented stream? pretty hardcore with this, and also I'm yeah, recording but, it for my end anyway. <laughs> The mm -hmm. artist opening for the other person would probably say they consented as well. At the end of the day, I think industry standards are what dictate what should or shouldn't happen in terms of the baseline. What you would think is normal or good based off of your wants or what you want ethically isn't necessarily the case for a lot of situations. I know as a dancer, for example, plenty of people do gigs for free just so they can be on stage. And mm -hmm. do I think it's a good thing? No. Do I think it's a good industry standard? No. But it is normal. And I don't think the people who are doing it are all evil. I just think it's bad practice and it's sure. normalized. Well, and to be fair, all four of us have the capability of monetizing this on our own channels if we want to. It's always there. Yeah, um, but Destiny does bring on crazy that's... You know, on people <laughs> who are sick and probably can't monetize it on their own <laughs> channels and farms them. So there, he doesn't do that with everyone. Should he pay those people? Like every time I see Corantos and he's like begging for money, should he be paying him more? Is essentially what I'm asking. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you got a, Corantos is your employee now? Sorry, I tuned out. <laughs> what the fuck? No, 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 no. Don't worry about that. Okay. He's been that's known right. to make some mistakes. That's okay. All right. Miss Steps. Um, yeah. Well, listen, uh, I think this was a good chat. Um, yeah. Yo, Mudahar, stop hating on XQC. Leave him alone. Okay.
Let him make his money. Stop, stop being jealous. Okay. True. I know, man. I gotta stop being a soy boy, bro. And true. <laughs> All right, guys. Good, good talking to you guys. I'm gonna head out. Be careful. See you, dude. See you guys. All right, Destiny. Um, oh, anything else? Yeah. <laughs> anything else? Gotcha. gotcha. Uh, I think we're. I think we're good. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's up to chat at this point if there's anything else that we're supposed to cover, because I feel like we got it. Are you, um, well, fuck, did you want to finish watching that video, Muller? I am completely up to do it? that if you want. It does cover the whole topic pretty well, I think. Sure. Okay, yeah, go for it. Yeah, okay, uh, good. These guys are gone. Let's restart it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me react. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take the piss. In a reaction video, the reactor should still be adding stuff and creating content of their own, otherwise what's the point of watching their reaction over the original video? The content that the reactor creates should be at least different enough from the original work that they have created something of their own. For example, take a look at this video oh, from Oh, hold on, can you pause my question? Stories. The video is a myth. So here is something that's interesting to tango with. Um, I don't know what the right answer is here. Do you know what some of the biggest value React streamers give to the content? That's a little bit hard to know if, if you would consider it like transformative or not. You probably wouldn't, but if you were to guess, what do you think is one of the biggest reasons why people watch React content? Um, I mean, I've got a couple, but a more dystopian guess would be that it helps them feel like they're watching the thing with a friend as opposed to alone. Yeah, you're 100% right. Uh, one of the biggest, that's a kind of a, <laughs> that's a sad way of saying it. But um, yeah, one of the biggest reasons why React content does well is because people like to watch it with another community. It's like watching things with friends, basically. Yeah. Um, now, so when people are like, there needs to be a good reason to watch that one over the other one, there are a lot of people that will watch videos of mine just because they like to see chat's reaction to it. Yeah. Um, now, does that count as transformative or not? That I came up, I think, in court, but yeah. when we covered Denims, I think she brought up that argument that technically mm -hmm. chat being there makes it transformative. Um, Argue like th this is a, just a matter of where a line is drawn. I, I totally understand it as an argument, but like, no, I don't think mm -hmm. chat's enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. It'd be like, well, yeah, well, why? It's like, uh, it's hard to say. I guess that it doesn't change the video enough. Um, it doesn't go from being X to Y, it goes from being X to like, I don't know, an X mm -hmm. with a different color. Um, Something that's interesting is that, um, you know, Sargon of a Cod, right? I do. Mm -hmm. mm. He was straight ripping some lady's um video and throwing it onto his Twitter. And then he would like title the tweet or something. And I think a judge ruled that as actually being adequately transformative. You're talking about Akila, obviously, right? Was that it? Yeah. Where he was just, he was straight he, ripping with no commentary, the video putting on Twitter, but then he would put a tweet and the judge was like, I think that's transformative. Enough as far as I'm aware, I'd have to check. What he did mm -hmm. was, let's say it's a one minute video. He chopped it up into individual pieces and moved them around to change and to point out flaws in her argument. Oh, account. did he did he actually edit yeah. it? I thought they were just straight rips. Oh, okay, that changes it a bit then if that's okay. But I'm I'm with you though. If someone re-uploaded just a minute of you making a really great point on Twitter and then got a load of engagement from it and and you said you wanted to take it down, it'd be like, I guess you can. I'd probably argue mm -hmm. at that point that it might be more useful for you because people are invested in you at that point, not the uh, the person who's uploaded the treat. But I don't know that I would take any issue with you actually DMCAing it. Hmm. Okay. In it long, these stories wow. are gonna move. <laughs> Matthew Santori's really fell off. <laughs> I love the idea of a minute long ten uplifting story. It's just like dogs good <laughs> number nine. Uh For sale use baby shoes. In their reaction to this weird little ten uplifting stories video, they add their own jokes and commentary. Even if you'd already seen the video they were reacting to, you'd have plenty to gain from watching their reaction. It's a different piece of content now. Here we go. Oh, wasting time. Oh, <laughs> what a story. <laughs> this is the story. This is what they're doing. Uh, great story, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Do they kill themselves? Soot House is exceptional, and the whole cast clearly all understand that reaction content is something that requires effort to do properly. Now, their particular style is by no means the only way to do reaction content. It's a very diverse medium. War Flail versus Katana, or Shinai in this case. 
Uh, I haven't watched it yet. I wanted to give you my first-hand impression, reaction. Here's some reaction content from Scalagrim, a YouTuber who creates content about swords and other medieval weapons. He often reacts to other people's content, using it as a springboard from which to add his own insight, opinions, and commentary. He actually defended against it and caught the pole with his sword, but because it's a flail, it's like, yep, no you don't. <laughs> just whips right over top, knocks him in the head. This is one of the the main dangers when facing uh, a war flail. This is. I imagine you take no issue with any of this so far, because it's pretty much in favor of anything you've been talking about as well. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah. going through highly transformative react content, yeah. Another example of excellent reaction content. In terms of what he's actually doing with the content, he has basically nothing in common with Soot House. What these channels do have in common though is that it's clear you're getting something from watching their content that you wouldn't be getting if you just watched the original work. This dude seems to be quite a bit taller than his opponent, so he already has the reach advantage. The point is that in reacting you need to add something. If a reactor hasn't added anything and watching their reaction is basically just the same experience as watching what Whatever they're reacting to, then essentially they're just reposting something someone else made to their audience, reaping the rewards of someone else's work under the guise of reacting to it. Now, the wider YouTube community already went through all of this a few years ago. As a YouTube viewer, there's a good chance- oh fucking hell. <laughs> As a YouTube viewer, there's a good chance that you remember Jinx. Peaking in popularity around 2015, Jinx made a big splash on YouTube with his reaction videos. With someone else's work always playing in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, Jinx's whole thing was to just sit there, pretty much entirely vacuously, hardly saying anything, sometimes soy facing or laughing, as he plays the videos he's reacting to in full. Let's- it's, uh, Weird you'd never heard of him, because you've been on YouTube for fucking ever as well, as well as Twitch, right? But- no you... way, I haven't. I've been on YouTube seriously since probably, I don't know, 2018, 2019. Oh. Mm -hmm. But like you used it forever, right? Like with everyone else? Yeah, but I've always been a streamer, so I don't have time to like watch a ton of stuff, so. I miss out on a lot of like YouTube drama. I'll only oh. ever hear it if it like, yeah, is huge or ventures in the streaming world, you know? Fair enough, but is that like an easy concede for you? That you'd be like, this looks like shit? Like if he's, if he's only making random faces? Yeah, I can agree that it feels bad, yeah. Feels bad. Feels bad. Is it morally wrong? I'm not yeah. sure. But it definitely feels bad. I can agree with that. Oh, come on. I can't push you to morally bad. Even if it's like well, a it, at a zero scale, it's like a, a negative 0 0.1. Um, I think... Uh, I'm not sure, man. I don't know. Maybe. The thing is, is that like, I feel like this plays into going back to the first principles thing. We never actually resolved. <laughs> yeah. I personally, I'm not a huge, I don't like copyright that much. I think most of it is lame. I think we've talked about on our stream. I feel like when it comes to like, even like major motion pictures and shit, I feel like copyright should last like a year. And then after that, fuck you. A lot of other people do shit with it. So I'm not like a huge copyright person. Um, maybe if I was in a, um, maybe if I was in a situation where my shit was getting ripped like hardcore and I felt like I was losing, maybe I'd feel differently, but, um, well, I mean, I in, in the situation time. for movies, right? Like, if it was one mm -hmm. year, but then there's just a channel on YouTube that every time the year ends up, they just repost the next newest movie on there, and then they make the most money out of everybody. Like, it's just, that's that's the way that works. Doesn't it feel a little like, wow, that person was, I guess they got in first with the uploading movies when they're, they're out, and they do nothing I, else. I mean, like, you got a year to make money off your copyright, and then after that, yeah, fucking let people watch it for free. Fuck yeah. Based. Well, why are you in favor of it for a year, even, then? Um, probably, well, because if it wasn't for a year, then people could literally, you would spend a hundred million dollars making a movie, and then somebody would steal it in one day, and then you'd be completely fucked. Nobody would invest in, like, any copyright material anymore. So it is about, like, money, because I got, I, you know, I, I mean, we're gonna get way too into the weeds of politics at this point, but, like, you know, it's your property. <laughs> like, it's to be something that you're allowed to do whatever the fuck you want with, sort of thing. Well, well, your property is interesting when you talk about copyright, because technically when you're depriving somebody of a copyright, you're not really depriving them of a physical property. It's intellectual property. Yeah. And the rules around intellectual property are going to be governed by whatever state body exists. And yeah, be because when somebody steals intellectual property, they're not depriving you of it like they would of physical property, right? Now, they could deprive you from rents or like uh, revenues from it, but it's, a, it's I think it's a little bit more of a complicated topic than just like somebody stealing your toothbrush, you're right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand the difference. It's just, um, well, I guess it's kind of pointless to go down this road because we're not in that world, I suppose. Though I find it interesting, the idea of uh, limiting copyrights to one year. At least if it's, you know, across the board, I, it wouldn't be uh, too bad to see what that world would look like, I suppose. Yeah, I'd just be curious to see what it'd look like. Or maybe even like five years, but I think it'd be curious. Yeah, right now it's way too long. Well, 100 years or whatever is uh, way too long. 
I'd be inclined to agree with you on that, yeah. Especially when Disney like have a stranglehold on so many IPs that, as you said earlier, could be made better if they were released into more creative and uh, better talented people, I suppose. Uh-huh. Um, so I can buy that. It's just that this... Um, it's almost like the word pathetic comes up, but then that like, just goes back to the sort of like the criticism is just that they're talentless and they shouldn't have sure. success if they're talentless. Sure. But I mean, I think like playthrough channels that just like play through story games are going to be like the same. Well, I told you right? I'm with you on that one, actually, uh, which is controversial, I think. Long would channels. You, do you feel like that's morally bad? People that just play through like The Last of Us on the easiest difficulty or people that just play through like Telltale games or. So like I said, if it's. I think The Last of Us, you can, through the mechanics, transform that experience. Like, watching you play The Last of Us while commenting on all the story beats and you actually shooting, aiming, finding things, and reading lore, I think that would transform it completely. However, if you said nothing, um, mm-hmm. I'd be like, we're skirting the line now, because uh, we're lucky in the world that we have that games, for the most part, let you do whatever the hell you want, including game soundtracks. You can just use, you can re-upload them, make money if you want, which, you know, mm-hmm. that's probably wrong if we're going to be buying the whole copyright stuff with everything. Um, but with games, like, yeah, there's a couple of games where I think that if you were to upload them without commentary, that, yeah, it would be kind of unethical because you're just stealing someone else's thing at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, but are you on board with that? or I think I'd be okay with game companies deciding how they want to go forward with it. Like, I- I'm sympathetic towards game companies that are like, you can't just re-upload, like, our game, our heavy story-driven game, because then who's going to play it? Because there's probably an, an actual substitution effect there. Because yeah, I'm um, not looking to escape hatch this with like, yeah, but they're they're way richer and way more powerful, so it doesn't really matter. I'd rather appeal to like it still feels wrong though. It's the same kind of wrong. Yeah, I assume. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I don't think I would ever appeal to the amount of. I don't think just because you make a lot of money that that justifies people like doing things to that they wouldn't to poor people, right? Like, oh, this person makes a lot of money so we can steal his content. Like, I don't think that doesn't feel very satisfying to me. Like, if it's wrong, it should be wrong regardless. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm trying to aim it as well. Sure, Let's take yeah. a look at his reaction to the official compilation of the full Astaf movie series. This compilation is 14 minutes long and contains all eight episodes of Astaf movie that were out back when it was released. The Astaf movie series represents a huge amount of work spearheaded by the series creator, Tomska, seen here with me at VidCon 2020. Here's a compilation I put together of everything, everything that Jinx says over the course of his reaction to this compilation. Are you ready? Here we go. What? Really? Wow. What? What? Oh, what? What the fuck? What the fuck? Hey, die. <laughs> what the hell? Not the buns. What the hell is this? What the fuck? This is all you got out. Oh. Again. Those 33 words that it took him 15 seconds to say, 27% of which were what were all he had to contribute as he let the video play for its full 14 minute duration that's all he has to say besides his outro where he sums up his thoughts on the video it's so funny because it's just like the whole thing is just like what and his intro where he explains he's going to be watching the astaf movie episode <laughs> yeah, know, right? one to eight compilation <laughs> I know a lot of people do request in this one like millions millions of views and subs i just it does make you wonder at some point like why the fuck are people watching this but i guess what we went back to earlier the whole like people want to feel like they're watching it with someone that is enough of a powerful motivator to get this stuff to be a successful industry mm-hmm. back and forth like they like do one through eight like one at a time but it's kind of hard to find each and every one of them like it's kind of hard to i'm sorry to to quote you what did you look for the absolute rest of the time he's just sitting there in silence sometimes laughing or making a facial expression and for this video where jinx just freeboots someone else's work adding nothing he gets Five million views! I'm not salty. Now, what I'm not doing here is I am definitely not asking you to get mad on Tom Scar's behalf. I don't actually know him, that's that's not how pictures work, but as far as I can tell, he has all the means to easily get this video taken down if that's what he wants. As a large YouTuber, I have the ability to deal with copyright infringement directly. I can either take down people's re-uploads of my videos, or I can monetize those videos, basically meaning that, you know, it stays up on their channel, but I make money from ads. And 99.9% of the time, I don't take down other people's videos. As far as I can tell, Tom is totally fine with this video existing, and that's completely valid of him. The thing is though, it would also be totally valid of Tom Scott to turn around to Jinx and say, what the fuck are you doing? Can you not just re-upload my work with your face in the corner, please? It would be absolutely reasonable for any YouTuber to have that reaction. Enter Jack's films. That's not an instruction. When Jinx rebooted, you know him, right? 
I don't, but I don't know anybody, so don't worry <laughs> okay. about who I know. That doesn't mean anything. Okay, I, I, thought, I thought, I, for some reason, I remember you talking to him, but he's another person that would be interesting to see if you, uh, well, you would change have. your mind on anything. One of Jack's videos. In Did exactly we talk to him before? Way. I don't know. Uh, I don't remember. Chat, do you know? He is old school. He's an old meme. Okay, I don't know. Maybe I might have. I'm not sure. Jack snapped back with a video satirizing Jinx's content. Jack's video ends with a series of pertinent, snappy, and to the point criticisms of what Jinx was doing. I really like the part where you played my video in its entirety and then didn't really react to it, just kind of sat there. You added virtually no insight. Pretty brilliant how you play the entire video in your channel. It's like it's a one stop shop. Why bother going to my channel to watch that video when you can just Watch that and your reaction. And obviously Jack is well within his rights to react this way because there's really no meaningful difference between what Jinx did and someone just downloading and then reposting one of Jack's videos. Just because some people are okay with this kind of thing doesn't mean you get to go around doing it to everyone. Your partner might be really into hard cactus play, but before you whip out your favorite Acanthosarius Tetragonus, you're going to check. I chose this picture because it looked a bit like a willy. There's a very clear reason that Jinx attracted this kind of backlash with his content, but channels like Soot House didn't attract the same kind of backlash with theirs. If a part of your work relies on you uploading other people's content, then you better make sure that's not all you're doing, otherwise you're just re-uploading other people's content. Which is why I believe that Jinx didn't get away with it at all, meanwhile a lot of Twitch streamers do, because they're not mm -hmm. exclusively uploading people's content and using it. They also do- they also do what? I was going to say they also do content where they fully react because they're very passionate and interested in the topic, or that they're playing games and that's a whole other thing, or they're just talking. Mm -hmm. Do these YouTubers, are they live reacting? Or are they just uploading like a reaction video? They'll record themselves and then chop it up to mainly have their reactions, but a lot of the time it just ends up being... I mean, I say this as if it's still current. I don't know if people still do this on YouTube. It's mostly streamers moving their shit onto YouTube now because this died. Okay, this It th wasn't just Jinx. There was loads of people doing this. But once mm -hmm. it got like shamed out of the fucking whole culture, like it's gone. But now mm -hmm. it's coming back, sort of. And it, it it always comes back every once in a while, and everyone gets riled up. Like I said, that's why people are getting probably ridiculously angry now because it's just like, oh shit, this shit again. Hmm. It's fine oh. to do that if you have permission, but it's not if you don't. So let's take this back to the golden rule: How, as a React content creator, do you avoid? taking the pit. Well, everyone in chat saying they still do it, so there you go, that shows what I know about, like, the... It's it's pervasive, and it's really profitable, so of course it's still there, that makes sense. Way to go, dumbass. It's just a matter of, like, what should be done about it, and I think people... That's why it's getting louder. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I think that so long as you're clearly trying, it's fine. You don't have to knock it out of the park every time, so long as there's clearly a respect and understanding there that you are working with someone else's content, I think you're good. Hassan Piker is one of the most successful streamers. Uh, do you know this guy? Oh, no. You know this guy? Um, Hassan? Ha Hassan Piker? He's a yes. yeah, YouTuber. He was the... Oh. Yeah. Is he? Does he do now? I know he used to be. Uh, he was the nephew of the Young Turks guy. He kind of like he basically trailblazed uh, Twitch politics. He kind of started oh. all up, and uh, he, he kind of um, kicked all that off. Very. Okay. He he kind of built the left online. Uh, it's mm -hmm. pretty awesome, actually. You should. I feel like you should know him. That's weird on huh. all of Twitch. His streams are on the long side, generally hitting the eight hour mark. He's wildly successful, generating a huge amount of traffic and revenue. And when I found out that he'd reacted to the video where I just roast a weird house, I got pretty excited. I wasn't really familiar with any of Hassan's work, but I have really been enjoying a lot of this modern wave of reaction content. I knew that there are still some jinxes around, but I also knew that Hassan is an accomplished creator who almost certainly knows better than to just, oh, he left. Okay, so it actually turns out that Hassan will just fairly regularly get up and leave while other people's videos are playing. This isn't what I'm here to prove in this video, this is just a fact. This is something he does. You could make a compilation of me sitting around, not even on camera, with a fucking video playing in the background. You could, when you're live for 13 hours a fucking day, of course there's gonna be, of course there's gonna be fucking dead space 
in between. But it's not the leaving in and of itself that is the issue. The same issue would be present if he was just sat there not saying anything like Jinx was. The getting up and leaving for extended periods of time just goes to show that he doesn't give a shit about even pretending that he's contributing anything here. But even when he's in the room, he's no stranger to just streaming other people's content with his own face in the corner. Now any content creator he does this to could be entirely okay with it, but I know from personal experience that he definitely doesn't bother to check. Now this certainly isn't the only thing he does, hell it's not even the only kind of reaction content that he does, but it is something that he does pretty often, so let's talk about it. It's also very much- and Don't worry, I wouldn't expect that you're gonna have to defend his arguments. Hassan brought out some uh, real interesting ones, like the he doesn't want to die one. Yeah, I think XQC uh, I saw on Twitter was also bringing up some not so great arguments. So <laughs> you I'm know what's great to... is you talk about how you want to defend portions of it and it's so fucking annoying because then you'll get lumped in with like the whole thing and you're like, fine, let's do it. But the mm -hmm. reverse is also happening where the biggest offenders are jumping into the group of people who I don't really have any issue with at all. And he's like, sure. yeah, us reactors, yeah. And it's like, fuck off. <laughs> sure. Not just him who does this. This particular style of content, other people's, is a growing trend with plenty of popular creators taking part in it. That's why I think this is so important to talk about. There are currently huge areas of the internet where precedent is being established and reinforced that it's apparently just absolutely fine to post other people's content so long as your face or chair is in the corner as you do it. Now, I don't want to be too quick to judge any of the creators that do that. All I want to do in this video is talk about what I do and don't think is okay and present my arguments as to why. And now because Hassan is our primary example, let's take a look at the reaction he served up to some of my content. And while we're doing it, let's see how he compares to Jinx. 8800 Blue Lick Road is a three bedroom house that you can go on a 3D virtual tour of right now if you're interested in purchasing it. And it's, uh, you know, they say you don't really know someone until you've uh, held hands while what taking a dump. This digital fuck? property viewing is one of those things where the longer you stare at the image, the more bizarre things you notice. So today I'm <laughs> going to take you on a sightseeing tour of the oddities. This is literally Steak HQ. Hold on. I I'm going to be back in one second. Of 8800 Blue Lick Road. The first three and a half minutes of my video were enjoyed mostly by Hassan's chair and his chat. Although apparently for the duration of this, Hassan was watching the video on his phone, so he can see everything that his chair is seeing. It's not until we're four minutes in, which just to be clear is about a third of the way through the video, that Hassan decides to add his first piece of commentary. I feel like it's it's gotta be like uh it, it's gotta be I don't know. Based? Like someone who <laughs> I mean, you know, like the whole react harder gets memed, but like, do you think that it's important to actually like try and have insight or be entertaining? Because you said most people aren't even capable of it, which I totally agree. But like, well, is it I on think... you to even try? Yeah, I guess, like I said, now, whether or not any of this is good or bad, I'm not sure, but I said, what I said before was, I think it would depend on the type of video you're reacting to. Like, if Hassan was reacting to a Ben Shapiro video and he watched the whole thing and he didn't say anything, I'd be like, what are you doing, bro? Um, but if he was watching like that JFK uh conspiracy documentary like i wouldn't expect him to say anything i don't know what he could even contribute you know and you then your response to that was like then don't watch those types of videos basically but, i don't yeah. buy that i feel like you'd have loads to contribute and so would he if you actually really wanted to talk about what was happening in the video nah i don't i don't know what i would even say i don't know much about jfk conspiracies i think there were like two or three comments that i had to make but other than that i have no idea what i can i'm just there to basically learn like chat Thing. Or like the internet, another good example, like that internet historian cave guy, like that, we're just like watching like this guy tell a story about a dude that got stuck in a cave. I don't know what I could possibly contribute to that. Well, I mean, not to get too meta with this, but like, you know, a big reason people watch either of us break down anything is that we give everything, like we say more than we ever normally would. That's kind of like the deal of them watching us. So if I'm say watching that video from internet historian, I could just start talking about how like, do you know, like with these, these guys who go into these holes, like. For some reason, they'll go through a hole that's basically the size of their body, and they're pretty chill about it. When that's the kind of thing that I think is some like staggering number of people who are, like absolutely deathly afraid of ever doing it. The fucking people who do this are built different; like they're insane, and uh, it'll be in pitch black as well. It's like, we're talking about the times where they only have like a lantern at best. Just something like that per minute is perfectly normal and easy, and it's why people are watching you. I'm gonna give you a video at some point. I'm gonna challenge you to do it. We'll see. Absolutely. I, 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 we pause it on EFAP. There's no video you could show me that I wouldn't have commentary for. Never mind. Yeah, that's right. I did do that. Eve. Never mind. You probably yep. could. Yeah, <laughs> fuck you. Who has a disability or something, right? 
Um, I'm not sure what part of this messy, weird house has made Hassan conclude, hmm, yes, only a disabled could have caused this. That's what he sounds like, shut up. Or what kind of disability he could possibly mean? Like, I'm not even sure if he means mental or physical. What the fuck are you talking about? What's the disability that makes you go, I need to install a toilet next to my fucking toilet? And you get, like, his fucking sentence is so much more interesting to even think and talk about. The fact that he saw all of this and said the person was probably disabled. Sure, yeah. Like, like the, I, I find this fascinating, that like he's contributed basically nothing, and yet what he contributed is more interesting than a lot of what anyone could have said about that snap that he, uh, snippet that he showed. Now, <laughs> we'll give it to Hassan. This is a more fully formed thought than anything Jinx said while Tom Scar's video was playing. It's also a more fully formed thought than me going, Ugh! But he doesn't elaborate either. This is it. This is his commentary. If he began to elaborate on what it was he actually meant by that comment, he might have started approaching having something meaningful to add to my work. He'd also hopefully have made it clear that he didn't actually mean most of the things that it sounded like he could have meant by that. I also just really want to know what the fuck he meant. But so far, my video has played uninterrupted for nearly a third of its length, and all Hassan has contributed is going, uh, it's probably a disabled person that did this, which technically is a sentence. He lets the video play for another 45 seconds before eventually adding his second comment. I like, I, I will never understand why there's two bathrooms side by side. I guess that's like the fucking, the biggest flex you can do is when you have not one, but two fucking side by side bathrooms, you know what I mean? No, not really. So the house I was roasting actually does have two side by side bathrooms. But based on the fact that I haven't shown that yet in the video that he's reacting to, and the fact that what I did just show is two side by side toilets, my guess is that he's just forgotten the word toilet and is saying bathroom instead of toilet. And to be honest, no, I really don't know what he means by this. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a joke, a serious comment or a mix of the two. Is he trying to say that a flex is normally something extravagant and unnecessary? and this is extravagant and unnecessary. I guess we'll go with, I think he technically has added something small here. I'm just not really sure what it was. He then lets the video play completely uninterrupted for another two minutes before eventually he makes a third comment. So it's a, it's a house that- <laughs> This guy's really mad. I mean, you, you have to understand, like, the autistic detail is to prove the point, but I, no, I, know, I, know. I know what you mean. Like, I'm like this, yeah. so I don't, uh, it's, you know. <laughs> oh, I'll go Gucci, I'll go Gucci in the hoochie. Used to belong to a church, but then the eBay resellers just like made it into their eBay house or something. Is that what it is? He'd been receiving a few messages in chat telling him that this house used to be a church. And here his contribution to my video is to ask, hey, is that true? He then adds his fourth comment, which is about the fact that the house is full of loads of boxes. Having that many boxes just means they could be a streamer, to be honest. Honestly, I really don't know what he means by this one either. Hey, you can explain you're a streamer. What does it mean that you have loads of boxes? Oh, um... Every single streamer house you'll ever go to, when you enter the house, there's 50 million boxes from Amazon because every streamer orders shit and then they just throw the boxes in the main room. Every streamer house I've been to has got like 50 million Amazon boxes of random shit or bags from like food takeout or whatever, yeah. Can I just hire someone to deal with it? <laughs> I usually do, I have a maid that comes twice a week, but yeah. All right. But this is the first instance where I feel that I'm just missing the reference. Like, I think it's pretty clear that he's making some kind of joke here. I just don't get it. Now, I think by this point, you probably understand the nature of Hassan's commentary. It's pretty much non-existent. In total, Hassan ended up not even spending two minutes talking as he let my 14 minute video play in full. He's very clearly leaning on my video to entertain his audience for him in this situation. This is the downtime he has no choice but to take because of his choice to stream for 13 hours a day. Jinx definitely did worse in the matter of actually adding something to the content, but neither of them have done well at all. Jinx, at the very least, did shout out the original video and put a link to it in his description. It's even right at the top of his description, so you don't have to click show more to see it. Good stuff. Link to the original video is in the description if you just want to see some random shit. I don't know why I'd want to click it because you've already shown me literally all of it, but at least it's there. By reposting someone else's work, you remove it from its original context, a context which is controlled by the creator. For example, the latest Astiff movie compilation ends with a merch store shout out and some links to some more of Tom Scar's work. The description is filled with all kinds of links, including links to Tom's other social media and people that Tom wants 
wants to credit. And of course, this is a YouTube video, so there are loads of useful buttons under it by default, including a subscribe button, a like button, and a link to the creator's channel. Not only is there loads of really useful stuff here, there's also a dislike button. By reposting someone else's work, you completely change this context. On Jinx's re-upload, most of these links are unavoidably gone, replaced with links that benefit Jinx instead. I don't think we actually got to talk about that level of damage. I assume you'd consider it pretty minuscule, though. No, actually, that's a big one. I try to, believe it or not, when I'm watching other people's shit, like, I won't skip their ads, and I'll try to, like, if they, like, I think when I finish the one guy's video, I linked his Patreon at the end. I usually try to, like, link channels, if I remember to, because um, you should give them some kind of, like, shout out or something. But, like, yeah. people that will watch other people's, rea um, like, videos, and then they, like, they skip the ad reads in the middle, it's like, bro, at least let the motherfucker do his ad read. Like, <laughs> damn, you're literally eating all of his content. You might as well let the guy try to get like 10 or 20 people from chat. <laughs> you know, like watch the VPN ad. Yeah, but, and the, yeah. Um, like at the end when they say like what else they've got coming up, do you let them sort of say that stuff? Yeah, I try to play through to the end, yeah. Because yeah. otherwise you're literally just like straight ripping. Like you're ripping like 90% of it and the 10% you're chewing off are like the part that they probably get compensated the most for. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like it kind of comes back to the fact that you're doing that because it's probable that you're doing damage. But like that's kind of well, where I'm at with. Doing damage. I'm just I'm making a lot of money off it, so if I can like help the dude out a little bit, like of course I will. That's um, why here. Oh God. Well, yeah, I, yeah. what I was getting at was more so just like you don't even you're not certain of any damage necessarily because you don't, we don't have the numbers, like I said. But you're still willing to do all of that. Do you consider that above and beyond or just neutral? Um, probably above and beyond. But I mean, like I think everybody should do it. I think that's the bare minimum. Like making, everyone like, should be doing that. Sure. I think if there was like an easy way to like compensate people for their work, I think most people would do it. I think maybe that's just it's funny you say that because Hassan desperately cuts off Jay before any promotion of his own videos. It's quite funny. I think it's in this video. Why? Yeah. So it is good, <laughs> good him, question. The links he can control, he makes the first one a link to Tom Scar's original video. It would be even better of him to not just repost other people's work without permission, but this is the next best thing. Now, again, I'm not asking you to get angry on Tom Scar's behalf. I'm not asking you to get angry on my behalf either. I'm doing fine. I am incredibly lucky to be able to work YouTube as my job. I just don't know if Hassan freebooting my work even impacted me negatively. And if it did, I don't know how severely. I just don't have access to that kind of information. But what I do know is that if by doing this, Hassan had taken literally every future potential viewer from that video, and as a result, it was literally never watched again ever, I would still be doing absolutely fine. I'm not trying to tell you some kind of sob story here about just how hard my life is. If in a shocking twist of character, Hassan offered to financially compensate me for the video of mine he freebooted, I wouldn't take his money. However, when this kind of thing is done completely without permission and without knowing enough about the original creator, you run the risk of freebooting work from a creator who is struggling. Or you could end up freebooting a video that represents months or even years of work on behalf of the creator. Creator. I once spent six months working all day every day on one single YouTube video and if Hassan had freebooted that, I would be very pissed off. I would be even more pissed off if I was a creator who genuinely was struggling, either financially or in just getting people to my channel to watch the videos that I make. And I would be more pissed off if when a reactor freebooted my content, they hadn't even taken the tiniest piece of minimal effort to just acknowledge the original creator in any way, completely taking the work that they just used to entertain their audience for granted. With I'm not sure if it makes sense to this video, but I just wanted to mention it is true. Someone just mentioned in chat that uh, Hassan did indeed call Jay a Nazi as a result of all this. <laughs> well, is he? Uh, what, of course. Like, can't you tell already? Like, <laughs> I feel like it's just blatant. Wait, why would he call him a Nazi? Because he's vaguely associated with EFAP, who are 100% Nazis. That, that's obvious. Like, I wouldn't need to prove that one. But, um... Wait, were, you guys? Yeah. The son fucking despises us. The second he found out that we were critical of him, he, like, flushed us Calls you Nazis? <laughs> yeah. I think it's because someone in chat would have said it. It's that kind of stupid shit where, you know, it's just like dismiss, get him out of here sort of thing. It's uh, so biased. Oh, I didn't know you guys had like, I don't know you guys had a history like that. Oh. We don't have a history. He just, oh, someone in his chat said, said like, EFAP responded to you. Sargon was in your chat? Oh, definitely, yeah. That's what I mean. So J because EFAP because Sargon. Okay. Well. No thought I mean, you know. 
given to the fact that it was made by another person. Yeah, so this is what Hassan did. For the majority of the time, my name and the video's title aren't on screen. This information is only made visible when his- Yeah, he called us, he called us the kill stream. He said we were the Nazi kill stream. Uh, oh, I forgot about that. Setup requires it to be. He doesn't attempt to share any kind of link to any of my work in any way. He doesn't attempt to give me any credit or shout me out. I don't need him to do literally all of those things, but for him to make no attempt to do absolutely any of them when, without permission, he's freebooting the work of an independent creator he knows absolutely nothing about, yes, that is absolutely taking the fucking piss. And on top of that, okay, I know I said that he played my video in full, but uh, I, I like to you a little bit. He plays all of the content of the video, but then right at the end when I just take 20 seconds to talk about other stuff I'm working on and where you can find it, well, he turns it off before I can say any of that stuff. Growth <laughs> industry, Why? that's everything I have for you today. This has just been a very small project on the side him, as I him. work on something much bigger. My full critique and breakdown of seasons 11 okay, and I'm gonna 12. I'm going to actually into the call. Yeah, I mean, he wants to be in. Um... Wow, good job he did that. This was becoming dangerously close to an interaction that would have benefited both of us instead of just him. Even Jinx knew to shout out the video he was reacting Base. to. This is a crazy amount of just taking- I'm starting to wonder if base just means what an asshole. <laughs> but what base, Hassan, you're just jealous that this guy's <laughs> on his grind set and you're a fucking loser that can't grind as hard as he can. He doesn't have time. He doesn't have time to watch your fucking shout outs. He's got to go eat somebody else's <laughs> content, dude. What a god. I mean, he's still doing it to this day, that legend. Other people's work for granted. No consideration is given to the fact that the work here was done by someone else. Again, my point here isn't that I desperately want Hassan to shout me out. I don't need that. I don't want that. I am fine. The point is that this is his attitude when making reaction content, and he could end up doing this to anyone. The point of this video isn't like a petition to get me the recognition I deserve for my joke about how there are two toilets next to each other. The point of this video is to discuss a certain type of reaction content Content, the arguments that get used to justify it, and why all of those arguments are bullshit. But where am I going to get examples of these arguments? Well, when I found out that Hassan had freebooted my content, similar to Jack's films, I went live to satirize him. <laughs> of 8800 Blue Lick Road. If we start at the entrance, you're greeted by a Minions brand doormat that really no home is complete without. Sure, but I think we might have found the toilet soda culprit. Now, if we go across the hall from the man cave, we'll find ourselves in the second bathroom of the property. Now, that urinal <laughs> in a residential bathroom- Finally, is a got a laugh out of you. So, it's a, it's a house that- <laughs> Jesus Christ. belong to a church, but then- This is top tier um, satire, okay? eBay resellers just like, made it into their eBay house or something? Is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, you think Donkey ripped you off as well? Uh, yeah, Donkey covered the uh, the same house. The thing is, a few people have covered it, and I wasn't the first one to cover it. I was the first person to do it as a YouTube video, like a fully edited thing, as far as I know. <laughs> um, but like a few Twitch streamers went and had a look at it and did live reactions to it, and that's how I found out about it. So maybe Donkey found out about it the same way that I did. Maybe he saw my video as well, but you know, he made, he did his own spin on it. He didn't just play my video in full while saying very little, um, or just not being in the room. He made his own video. Like, just to be clear, you can react to my content on stream. I encourage that. Please go for it. But react. Do it in a transformative way where it's reasonable for people to assume that the thing they're there for is you. And also make it clear where to find the video if people want to check it out and like, you know, that's, 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 that's what I do whenever I cover someone else's content on stream. Uh, I make it clear where they can go to go and check, except today, fuck that. Um, but I normally make it clear where they can go to go and check it out. I tell them to check it out if they liked it, unless it's like something that I, that I'm criticizing like very strongly, in which case I don't really feel that it's. That one's interesting because uh, there's an argument to be made that when you're being heavily critical of a channel, if you link them, that you're sending people to them to you know, say horrible things or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know, the ethics get confused in that one because people would simultaneously condemn you for either not linking their details or linking their details. Like, guys, there's this really bad website with child porn. <laughs> uh, it's a horrible <laughs> thing. Uh, check the link out in the description below. Oh my below god, you're brigading and, uh... them! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I can understand the conflicting feelings of that, yeah. That, that there would be any benefit to saying go and check this out because it's like that would feel very artificial and I'm like this is shit go check it out so then I don't say go check it out but I still make it clear where to find it or at least try to oh by the way that donkey video I'm talking about in this clip and this is an empty deck of cards 
Where are they? Huh? Yeah, Hassan has covered that video as well. Here they are. This is where I place. Pretty great reaction. The That's the next sauce. meta, bro. Exactly. Reacting to reactions of shit without saying or doing anything. <laughs> that image of Hassan's chair is in every Twitter thread about this topic. I love it. Literally the Jesus. entire runtime of that, that chair video. is fighting for its life for most popular <laughs> chair on the internet. It's that chair and Sneeko's chair. Which one's gonna win out in the end? We'll find out. And I have no idea if Dunky would be okay with this. Like, I don't fucking know Dunky, man, but apparently they're friends, so hopefully. So after I finished my YouTube live stream, the comments started rolling in, which, you know, is what happens always. And at first, I got exactly the kind of comments I would expect to. Can't wait to see Hassan react to this reaction. Lamal. I really enjoy Hassan's stream and was watching during this. I also thoroughly enjoy your content. I was pretty disappointed he didn't shout you out. Hassan! isn't reacting what is he even adding to the conversation he wasn't even in a room for four minutes jay has eaten too much cardboard for my liking you know the normal stuff but after some time had passed eventually a cascade of new comments came in with a somewhat different tone to them try more what a baby literally wouldn't even know who you are if it wasn't for hassan streaming your video but you <laughs> drama baiting lol what a baby yeah what could possibly have i think their mac is uh their Mac is like, you know, I, they're, uh, what, it's just, it's just the fucking video that I had up while I was cooking. I have a Hassan ended up spending like 30 minutes talking about all of this live on Twitch. And we will be taking a look at what he said, but what's way more interesting to me right now is the fact that as a result of this stream, loads of his fans appeared in my comments making arguments as to why they think this kind of reaction content is okay. This is why I find Hassan's reaction to my video to be the perfect example to discuss the wider issue. It comes ready packaged with countless examples of what people actually think about this kind of thing. So without further ado, I'll sit down, pour myself a nice refreshing glass of beans, and go over some of the arguments that are made in favor of this kind of reaction. And also, yes, I use YouTube in light mode. Feel free to boost my algorithm rating by leaving a comment complaining about it if you like. like I'll admit that's fucked up. Uh, it's probably the <laughs> biggest flaw in the whole video. It's probably blinding people at home right now, but hey, that's what happens. People hey, anyway. that freak out over light mode, bro, who the fuck cares? Y'all motherfuckers are Isn't weird. Isn't that the meme? They don't actually care. They're just making fun of them. Dark mode forward. I don't know. Some people get real mad about light mode and dark mode shit. I, I don't know. I, I don't think know, I watch man. all my shit in light mode. You do? Yeah, who cares? Oh, all right, that's. I mean, I thought more of you, but that's okay. Wait, onto the arguments. I'm not the biggest Hassan fan, but I feel a lot of streamers just watch random videos to react to while they eat, so I don't feel like it's that bad that he does this. Everyone's doing it, so it's okay. Um, I, I feel like this is an argument you've made, by the way. Um, everybody doing something doesn't necessarily make it okay, but it can make it confusing. Um. Like, if everybody's doing something and nobody's complaining, then one day some people start to complain, it gets weird. This is why in the U.S., if you have a trademark, you have to enforce it, right? And otherwise you lose it, because it sets, like, weird precedence, yeah. But, I mean, it's obviously that's going to depend on the what we're talking about, right? Yeah, I just, um, I feel like it's, it's, you don't want to have to deal with this. It's like, fuck it, everyone's doing it, whatever. It doesn't seem to be that big of an issue. And it's like, okay, but do you yeah, actually maybe. find it an issue or not? Sure, but, I mean, like, theoretically, like... People, the like a um, a movie company could theoretically go after you guys for like doing the every frame of pause, right? Um, if like in that scenario, I don't know the because this is the problem with that is the mm -hmm. what we do is like fucking insanely transformative as far as I'm concerned. But mm -hmm. if we got hit with something from like Disney, then yeah, I'd probably have to back down because I have no idea if I would be able to actually like fight like in a serious like they were gonna sue me. Yeah, but I also that's also like I don't even know who would prevail. Like even if you had like unlimited legal funds, like is it actually fair use? Like because if you were doing this, point, like, yeah. yeah. Um, now this isn't to say that what you're doing is right or what someone is doing is wrong or just for any of this content. I'm just saying that that's how I can understand the arguments of like if a thing has been allowed for so long and then all of a sudden everybody gets mad about it, that can be really confusing. It's like well, this has kind of been like how everybody's been operating for a long time. Like was it actually bad? Now there are probably some examples where it's clearly wrong. Um, but I think there are other examples where it get more hazy, but yeah. Well, yeah, because uh, there are, I assume you're the same with this, there's a lot of things that are illegal that I would consider absolutely moral. So, you know, someone could be breaking the law in yeah, a particular like having... way, and I'd be like, I don't care about that, that's fine. True, like smoking weed. Yes, that's one of the best ones, yeah. I, I yeah. think it's bad that everyone's doing this, but also this is literally just an appeal to popularity fallacy. Um, <laughs> 
Next. I watch Hassan pretty frequently, and I honestly think it's because he was eating, Lamau. Content quality usually takes a nosedive for that half an hour. He's usually good about crediting channels and sharing his thoughts throughout. A lot of the time he's leaving or eating because he literally streams for 10 plus hours a day and he's got to do it sometime. And the chat needs to be entertained. Do you get like the underlying thing with a lot of these counters is like they agree it's bad, but that it's it's happening. Everyone's doing it. It's got to happen. This is the reason why it's, it's just like, oh, all we really want to get out there is that it's not a good thing. <laughs> As you're eating. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Fuck. I just got a weird thing that I've been into. Um, no, I understand. Yeah, that's not really a good justification. Yeah. Tained in the meantime, but I do agree it's annoying when he does this. Lol, these comments. Why don't you guys start a Twitch and react your way? This whole leaving, eating, etc. is just a constant stream meme combined with actually satisfying certain human needs, like peeing and eating. Also, he streams like 8 hours a day. You can't expect him to clown around energetically for every minute of those 8 hours. He literally leaves to cook for himself. Good for fucking him. Pause the video then. That video was literally randomly linked by someone in chat. Take it out of context, you guys make him sound like Hitler. You guys are too <laughs> judgmental. Jeez. Bro. So left my body reading that. Man, I remember history class in middle school learning about how people were always critical of Hitler's Twitch streams. You know, that's the main complaint people had at the time about Hitler. Three rules of being a streamer. One, react harder. Two, don't pause too much to react. It disrupts the content. Three, don't cook or eat food. You are a content slave and not allowed to leave frame for more than 30 seconds on an 8 to 12 Fuck, hour can stream. can I pause for a second? Can yeah. I just say, god damn. I wish I had a son's fan base. I'm going to be banning you guys myself <laughs> until you guys fall in line like this. Because these guys, these are the simp masters. Would you want this, Hell. though? They look like Hell idiots. Yeah, bro. <laughs> these guys carry his torch forward into the world. They're doing work, dude. God damn. These guys are balling out hard. I respect it. Hell yes. Okay, Notters. The idea that streamers need to do this because they've got to eat comes up semi-regularly. Hassan himself has even made similar arguments on multiple occasions. And of course there is truth to this. It is absolutely reasonable for any streamer who's live for 13 hours a day to have periods of low energy, to eat and to piss and shit everywhere. We all need downtime and to expect someone to not have any is completely unreasonable. Therefore, I need to just play other people's videos. I have no other choice. Don't cook or eat food. You are a content slave and not allowed to leave frame for more than 30 seconds on an 8 to 12 hour stream. 28. What the fuck are you talking about, you muppet? You lemon? You cabbage? You fucking rhombus? This person has seen me say it's bad to just stream other people's content in full without sufficient commentary or sufficient credit and is so absorbed into Twitch culture that they can't conceive <coughs> of another way to eat. Speaking as someone who streams semi-regularly and has been known to stream for longer than 12 hours in one go, there are plenty of other ways to take downtime, which isn't something I should have to explain to anyone. If you're a streamer and you reach a point in your stream where you feel that for whatever reason you're unable to fully entertain your audience by yourself, here are a few things you can try. Bring on a guest who can do most of the talking while you're away. This highway code applies to England, Scotland and Wales. The highway code is essential reading for everyone. Play something made by a creator who you know is happy for their content to be used in this way. Play your own streams or content. Just fucking end the stream, holy shit. And if all of these things and any other alternative- We'll say you pass on this one. BRB screens are beautiful. Good job. Yeah, and my orbiters that come in and argue while I'm away. Yeah. <laughs> all seem like they're too much effort then. Sucks to be you. Take some pride in your work. Holy shit. You don't get to just take something someone else made. Just tell them not to react to your videos. Other streamers like Matt Orchard and JCS are saying that they love the boost in views they're getting from Hassan's reacts. It's not clear that Jay would be opposed to it. If he didn't say enough in this video, then fair enough. Not everyone does their best all the time. How about just telling him not to do that instead of pulling this cringe shit? The sentiment that I have no right to complain because I could just ask Hassan not to do this again in future is another seeming pretty common one, but there are a few problems with it that I would like to get into. First and foremost, I have no idea how to contact Hassan. I couldn't find an email address listed for This is probably a bigger mistake, because there are plenty of ways you probably could get his attention, but it should be relevant that he's not gonna respond. Uh, yeah, and you probably shouldn't have- there, there should be a business email if you're in the business of doing this stuff, like, pretty readily available. If people can't find out how to contact you, that's probably- You can- problem. especially if you're a relatively popular content creator, you'll be able to get a pretty liked tweet, like, asking them or whatever, but... 
I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but it kind of sucks if you have to like if that's your goal. You have to try to like. Well, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. what do you think about the whole like? It's it, we're clearly in a position of we don't want to ask permission. We'd rather ask forgiveness. That seems to be uh, the. Well, if you don't think the thing is necessarily wrong, then I mean that's the that's part of the issue, right? Well, but they clearly do, right? If they're willing to take things down and stop the second anyone complains, because it seems like they're ready. They're like, I know what your argument's going to be, so just let me know. Um, maybe I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. Seems that way. For him, his DMs are closed on every social media of his that I checked, and I guess I could have tried adding him on Twitter, but he has a million Twitter followers and gets added like every couple of minutes. So, I mean, he might see it, and maybe there is a way I could easily contact him, but for all the looking I did, I couldn't find one. So if he really does run on a model of, I will just repost your content and if you don't like it, you have to reach out to me to tell me to stop, which, like, yeah he does, then there being no way clear from the outside looking in to get in touch with him is kind of a problem with that. And that's just problem one. It might, although probably hasn't, occurred to you to wonder how I even found out about this in the first place. Did Hassan send me a message letting me know he'd reacted to my video? Or maybe he left a YouTube comment telling me he'd done it. Or maybe my comment section filled up with his fans, all telling me that he'd sent them. No, I actually found out because by sheer coincidence, on the day that he did it, I just randomly out of the blue started to wonder, oh, how's that old video I made that one time about that weird house doing? And went into my analytics to check. And it's only because on a whim I made that decision that I happened to see what I already recognized as the distinct spike of someone live reacting to my video. 200 extra views to a full-time YouTuber is an entirely negligible amount, but a spike of that amount all at the same time and all on a video that's averaging about 50 views an hour is very clearly a sign of something, so I took to Twitter to ask if anyone knew what had happened, and it's only after all that that someone told me Hassan had reacted to the video. So maybe reaching out to Hassan is something that I could have tried on that occasion, but streamers operating under the assumption that if a creator doesn't like their work being reposted, they could- And would you say at this point that DMCA is the option? Um, well he didn't try reaching out to him at all, right? Uh, I don't know if he actually sent any tweets at Hassan, also, but obviously this got Hassan's attention, the video. Sure. Also, um, was this something that got uploaded to YouTube or was this just on stream? That's a good question. I'm not actually sure. Yeah. Uh, again, like, were, I though. don't, like, for nuclear options and PR reasons, like, I don't know if DMC first would be the, like, the best thing, but I think if somebody did DMC Hassan, I don't think you can complain. Right? Yeah, no, like, if that guy, that. like um, when I watched that JFK video yesterday, like, if that dude, like, had DMC at my stream afterwards, like, there's not really much I can say. It's like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, don't you think that, idea, like, that belies like the, over, but... like the, the fact that you don't think it's ethical necessarily? The fact that you wouldn't fight that at all? You're like, yeah, you got me. I mean, it, it's just so weird around, like, the copyright stuff. Like, theoretically, if I'm playing video games and they're, like, songs I'm playing in the background and somebody comes and DMCA's me for songs, like, that's technically fair as well. Yeah. But, um... The just where we're at with like online content creation and like technically this guy right now that we're watching could be could live DMC on my stream because he feels like it's not transformed enough and legally technically he would be okay to do that and we could fight it out. That is true. It's just like yeah, it's just like such a it's such a weird area. Yeah, yeah I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. I guess what you're almost uh, alluding to is like there's law and morals getting crossed over a little bit here. Like you know that legally they probably have a position to do that, like the Lemino video, and so you're just going to leave they it. They at least have a leg to stand on. But yeah. that you would consider yourself morally in the clear then? Um, I think so, but everything around copyright is so weird. It's hard to know, like, morally, like, what's in the right or wrong. Like, I think all of my feelings here are very, um, not ambivalent, um, very, like, m murky. Well, here's a question. Is that getting uploaded yeah. to your YouTube channel, the <laughs> Lamino coverage? <laughs> it shouldn't be. If it does, August is fucking fired. <laughs> okay, there you go. I don't know, that feels like it answers the question better. Just the fact that you would choose not to re-upload it. Well, but I think there's like there's also the question before that the other two guys are saying when they were in here of like it cross platform stuff feels a little bit different too, right? Um, I'm not because they brought that up earlier. I, I wasn't sure how I feel about that one because it's like it pulls both directions. I know that my videos get chewed up and put onto TikTok, and people yeah. like I've got a friend who's like, "Why aren't you stopping that?" And I was like, "Oh fuck, I, I don't even know if I can be bothered to go through the hassle of figuring out how TikTok works and finding these accounts and doing it." as opposed to just, I'm just going to do my thing. But I, of course, mm -hmm. think it's bullshit. That if there's, like, clips of my videos that get millions of views on there and someone's made a whole fucking career out of it, it's like, what the hell? 
I don't even know. I, I have no. If if like a wizard said, "Oh, that gets you um, zero engagement on your own channel," then of course I'm annoyed. But if they say it gets you loads, I'm like, I still don't know how I feel about that. Um, I was gonna say most people probably wouldn't care because yeah, the viewership crossover is so unrelated that like if you got 10 billion views on a clip on TikTok, it probably didn't even take a single view from YouTube because the audiences are just so but different. Then, so that's why I feel like people would feel differently. Like um, even real quick, even among a lot of these rack um, or the YouTube people, I think a lot of the YouTube people, I don't know how much they care when I've seen them talk about like people live reacting to their content versus like the uploading to YouTube is where people get really scared about the viewership cannibalization. Uh, I guess the thing is that I probably would care if I just engaged with it more and actually did take them down and then I chewed up my own videos and put them on TikTok and then it turns out what if I started making more money on there than I do on YouTube it's like oh shit like it's like I still see all of this as the fact that it's the wild west still vaguely like we're the latter terms of that on the internet but that mm -hmm. all this stuff is not regulated properly and we don't even know that most of it's happening I think uh short fat otaku said he's he's trying to put his videos on TikTok even though he can't monetize them yet in prep for when he finally can once they have like a Canadian option I guess sure so like it's it's all so young, all of this crazy shit. And I still think that that's partly why the audience is all over the place. Because mm -hmm. we don't know what all of the, so to speak, thought leaders have to say. That's why it's good to get these conversations going, because it's confusing. And the internet's rules are very fucking lax when it comes to all of this stuff. I'm not a fan of the fact that that's happening to my videos, and I wouldn't be on behalf of anyone else. And what's sort of funny about the Sniper Wolf stuff is that she'll be reacting to a video, and then Jax Films will figure out what the source is. And then he finds out the source is actually a group of seven TikToks that have been put into one, a channel mm -hmm. that takes them and collects them and then makes money off them. So then you find the source on that one, and it's like, oh shit, this is one with a hundred views that nobody gives a shit about, while Sniper Wolves has obviously gone all the way up to like several million. And like, yeah. who's going to stop that? Who even recognizes that it's happening? And again, that's sort of my argument for why I feel like the noise is, is getting more and more um, crazy. That's probably why. Hmm. You can just get in touch. Doesn't work if nine times out of ten the creators have no idea it's even happening. I found out about this dream because of a frankly very unlikely coincidence, but I almost certainly don't know about the majority of times that my videos have been reacted to on Twitch. Why would I know? And yeah, on this occasion I did know. I could have tried getting in touch with Hassan by adding him on Twitter I guess, but as a more general rule I don't think that it should be the job of creators to keep an eye on every Twitch streamer to make sure they're not reposting their content. It's not that I don't want this to happen again, it's that I don't think this should have happened in the first place. I'm not a big fan of the precedent of reactors seeming to think they can freeboot anyone's work they want to, and if the creator doesn't like it then it's their responsibility to find out and get in touch. You're not allowed to watch any YouTube videos unless you react the exact way the creator wants you to, the rules of the internet. You are a fucking rhombus. Reactors can use other people's content as a springboard to create whatever kind of content they want to. From Soot House to Scalagrim, I am a supporter of the reaction content genre. I make reaction content and I don't feel the need to ask the permission of the original creators first because I am always careful to make sure I am adding something and not just freebooting their work. The reaction that this person is defending with you're just mad they didn't react in exactly the way you want is this. And if we look by the kitchen in sync, you'll notice uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, mouthwash, and other toiletry supplies, despite the house having multiple bathrooms. This feels like the kind of choice that would only be made by someone who has truly ascended to a high plane of thought. Maybe they only feel comfortable cleaning their teeth if they're accompanied by this dense foliage from the living room. Now, if you go from the kitchen past these two completely freestanding cabinets in the middle of the room, you'll get some massive bedroom, but the house still has some surprises in store. Now we've got a very important shelf. Middle <laughs> And this isn't just one isolated comment. A depressing number of people seem to not even understand that there's a distinction between reaction content that adds to or transforms the original work, and reaction content that just lets the original work play for several minutes at a time while the reactor eats. They just don't get it. It's all just reaction content to them. Uh, Jay's entire content... Content? No, that's not what it says. That's all! Jay's entire channel revolves around him making content that only reacts to other people's content or analyzes it. There's no difference between what Jay is doing here and what he's complaining about Hassan doing. Jay is pathetically drama baiting over something that in essence would require him to delete 90% of his channel's videos if he was seen. I think this is indicative of the fact that nobody fucking knows what's going on or really is yeah. like, familiar with. Yeah, mad. Everyone's mad at each other, yeah, and they're all saying crazy shit. Um, mm -hmm. On both sides. He is about not using other people's content. When Hassan leaves, he's making. I know. Let's do. Let's do this one in a Scottish accent. When Hassan leaves, he's me. <laughs> When Hassan leaves, he's making food in his kitchen that's right next to his desk, so he can come back whenever. 
Good for him. Also, you use footage from shows that people put more time into as background footage. And yes, it's fair use. But if you're going to criticize someone for reacting, then I will criticize your use of footage that isn't technically yours. So yeah, a lot of the content on my channel is reviews of movies or shows, and I use footage of those movies and shows to show what I'm talking about. Although I don't really feel that I need to explain the kind of thing that I do, because you've been watching it for 30 minutes. And it's distinctly different from just letting someone else's content play as you cook, eat, and occasionally make vague or vacuous comments. If someone genuinely can't tell what the difference is here, I struggle to understand how I could even begin to explain it to them. It's like if an adult came up to me and asked, Hey, what's the difference between, like, a seagull and jealousy? I would not know what part of that they were struggling with. The icing on the cake for all of this is that when all of these people scroll down to the comments section, my pinned comment was right there, explicitly stating that I'm fine with actual reaction content and I just don't want my video used as filler. And then the cherry on the icing on the cake is this person's bizarre claims. You seem to have worked really hard to create this content. It's super scummy when someone just takes something and essentially copies the video without any substantial differences or changes. Looks like these guys copied your content too. I hate it when people just use other creators' content. Oh wait, that video was made two whole months before yours. Hmm, seems like you just might be milking this for content. This comment is wild to me. That YouTube link takes you to the archive of a Yogscast stream where they look at the same house I looked at in my video. I'm, I'm impressed that whoever filmed this went and actually was willing to go into these rooms. Yeah. They're reacting to the same stuff, but in it they make different jokes and say different things. This person can't even tell the difference between a non-transformative reaction and two people making videos about the same thing. And I think this is all very much motivated by the fact that they enjoy the fuck out of Hassan sitting there even. It doesn't matter. It's just the guy and that goes yeah. the same for all of us i suppose true it's, um not something you overreact to you can calm the fuck down talk it through you seemed explosive at the beginning of the stream i feel chill now though who me yeah you seem yeah i'm explosive over how unhinged people get on like things that weren't like I should go back and read some of my subreddit comments. People were like, in, <laughs> people were losing their minds. There were like 700 comment threads over like one of the most innocuous like things on the internet. I wonder if I can find some comments. Hold on. Like I said though, everyone can get, you know, there's crazy people everywhere. Yeah, I know, but it's just like th this particular thing is like, it's such a small blip like in the, and I don't even mean like a small blip like, oh, it's just like two black guys killed by the cops and it's like data wise. It's like, but it's just, um, it's like, it's like even the people that are affected don't even know if they're actually even being harmed or not. Um, yeah, I don't know. The, some of the comments even on my subreddit and then on Twitter especially have been like unhinged. Well, I mean, actually it was a lot more than two. The house was kind of a meme, so. Lol, just react harder. Hey, Jay, react harder. My man said react harder. Like react here, oh, harder. here's a comment. I'm sorry, hold on. I just want to okay, go for really it. Funny. Okay. Let's just be honest with each other. This is all because streamers think they're micro celebrities. Their ego is so big that they think their mere reactions to original content that may have taken months to make should be treated as equivalent in monetization by the YouTube algorithm. They're trying to build a platform and you're, ju and you're just not that famous, bro. Chill out. Now leave this bullshit drama. Play your little game while you charge some guy $80 to call in and ask if men and women can be friends or not. <laughs> Edit. Got banned. Obligatory destiny is a cuck. We'll be using my other alts, DGGL. You ain't getting away with your shit this time, you slippery sofa. Oh. Like, bro. Like, and this, this comment, and it's not like these are downloaded people. On my subreddit, this got 214 upvotes. Like, bro, are Dude, you, you what is happening? The <laughs> with, with how many people you banned, do you ever wonder that like, it's irrelevant because everyone just knows to make more counts ahead of time? No, I, like, I think that's something they do. But it's the fact that it gets up. It's like, bro, first of all, streamers literally are micro celebrities. If, if they're not celebrity celebrities, like a lot of these streamers are really fucking yeah, true. big. So it's just like such a, it's such a bizarro like, um, oh yeah, here's one. LOL, Destiny is backing the YouTube version of organized retail theft. Stealing goods because of a lax system and reselling it elsewhere. His justification is they don't call the cops, so it's okay. Like, well, the problem with organized retail theft is you're comparing actual theft of items that are causing stores to close down. Are there YouTubers that have stopped like making content because so many React streamers stole their shit? Like, holy shit, that one got that was like a third month. Oh, this one. Why don't rapes get reported? Must not be a problem. <laughs> yeah, man. Like. 
Let them, let them have their perspective. You don't need to ban them. Let them, you know, there's plenty of people who would argue against them. Oh, it's, it, and it's content when you get to read them out, you know, and talk about it. But yeah, okay. Well, the thing is, after what you said about the whole copyright shouldn't extend probably for about a year, it sounds like mm -hmm. you, your view on intellectual property versus, let's say, regular property is something that you should let your audience know about, like more well, explicitly, they have. maybe. They have. The problem is we've got we've gotten a lot of um, we've done a lot of like debate recently over like defensive property and there's a guy in my community Pisco and he likes to argue the most like extreme vo versions of anything I have so uh -huh. he obviously he likes to dip into intellectual property a lot but obviously there are huge differences between intellectual property and like actual property um, materially right because theoretically an infinite number of people could steal a piece of intellectual property but they're not necessarily depriving you of the property itself, they're depriving you of like rents from the property, which is fundamentally a different thing. Not to say that like one is okay and one isn't, but um, yeah. Also, I respect your um, intentions to purify your subreddit, but it is Reddit. You ain't doing that. Never gonna happen. People are gonna it, be- oh, no, Well, I know, but like, Jesus, the <laughs> unhinged comments. No, yeah, and then it makes you unhinged. I mean, it can anyway. At least you feel that way, right? You wanna be like, okay, fuck these people, I'm gonna go after them. Oh, well, I do, and I ban them all. And Feels off good. they go. Is a Twitch meme every, that's... every fucking streamer turns off the critical thinking part of their brain when it comes to this issue. The amount of mental gymnastics and insecurity in tweets discussing this is something to behold. Kind of expected more from Destiny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, maybe he likes this stream, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> that was just one thread. There are like four huge threads that like went up with us, and it's like, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, hey, anyway. man, you know. Uh, it's good to know that there's a lot of pushback and push forward and that you can figure this out. You can direct them. You can let them know they're, they're pit falling, right? Oh, don't worry. They've all fallen into the same pit. Well, they'll cr crawl out with different Reddit accounts. <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, did you read one out that said he's prepped with another account? So. Oh, yeah. There were a couple of them where the people will tweet, like, getting onto my 15th Reddit account just to let Destiny know he's a massive <laughs> cuck fucking hypocritical loser fuck whose content I will no longer be supporting. Like, people, it's just like, bro. Holy shit. Sorry, oh. go ahead. How much, wait, how much, what's the time left in this video? We are at uh, 35 out of 56. Um, 35, wait, say that again, sorry. 35 minutes out of 56 minutes. Jesus, okay, go for it. Yeah, it's a chonka. Often used to try and satirize people who are critical of non-transformative Twitch reactions. The sentiment behind it is that if a reaction streamer doesn't find the content they're watching particularly engaging, they're not going to have a particularly strong reaction. If you're there for their genuine reaction to the content they're watching, and their reaction really is very minimal, then surely by asking them to change that reaction, you're asking them to be fake. You can't control your emotions. It's not their fault if they didn't have an emotional response to the thing they're watching. As this commenter sums it up, if your problem is react harder, then my reply is create harder, and maybe you'd get those better reactions. The entire Dang. wall on the side of the room So is true, the videos are boring, that's the problem. Trying to slide what a out, chad. So you can, if you want, merge this room with the room next to it. So if you live here, you can finally achieve your dreams of a bedroom-kitchen combo. Finally, now I can sleep in a room that has two separate microwaves in it. You know, the having two of something completely unnecessarily is becoming a running theme. You know who reacted hard? Jinx. It says gullible on the ceiling. Oh, so it oh, you stole my lungs. <laughs> In his videos, Jinx was always laughing and smiling and soy facing. He very clearly We've come full circle. A strong emotional yeah, Jinx response. is now better than XQC and a oh, son no. and yeah, look at where we are. It was, we've tumbled. ...to the content he was reacting to, and people seem to forget this. All the same problems that apply to these modern Twitch streamers also apply to Jinx's content. I love that this video was made so fucking long ago, and one of the examples is reacting to a Lemino video. It uh, shows you how far <laughs> we've come. If Asana had been grinning from ear to ear for the entirety of his reaction to my video, that wouldn't have fixed the issue. Summing up the criticism as react harder does make it sound unreasonable, because saying react harder would be unreasonable. But summing it up as contribute something would be a lot more accurate. My man said contribute something, man. Make your reaction stream a meaningfully different experience to watching the original video. It's not just a matter of react harder. The sun stream is great. Watch it every day. Seem awfully sour over here, LOL. 
Enjoy the signal boost he gave you, Lamal. Literally wouldn't know who you are if it wasn't for Hassan streaming your video, but keep drama baiting, lol. What a baby. Imagine being such a fragile little person that you're mad someone looked at your so video and paid attention to your channel, but doesn't react harder or the way you wanted. Sad. The idea that I should just shut up and be thankful for the free clout is another pretty common one. And to that, my immediate thought is that you are grossly overestimating the amount of clout this kind of thing provides. Somewhere between 150 50 and 180 of Hassan's fans came to watch my video following his stream, which on average translates to a grand total of about 40 cents and 7 subscribers. So... Thanks, I guess? Now, I'm sure that mileage will vary from different streamers reacting to different videos. Some reactions will provide more, and some reactions will provide less. As a streamer, it's possible you'll provide someone clout by doing this, but you certainly can't base your behavior on the assumption that that's definitely what will happen. Which is what Hassan does. People ask, like, well, what's up? Like, aren't you taking views away? No, most YouTubers don't mind that. Actually love that shit when Twitch streamers react to their videos because they That's get a, a fucking word. fat bump. Best. On the topic of taking views away, though, it's unclear that if by doing this, streamers take away potential viewers from the videos they're reacting to. It's entirely possible that some of the 40,000 live viewers of that stream would have ended up watching the video, but now they've already seen it, won't bother. This isn't the kind of thing that YouTube analytics can tell us, so we just don't know. It is also interesting that everyone seems to be overestimating the amount of clout that this kind of thing provides. Uh, no, sir. I don't want the free clout. It's not free clout if he doesn't say who's video it is what the fuck uh had the channel name and name of the video up the entire time uh no he didn't but also yeah you are allowed to say no to this kind of thing that's allowed i imagine that if pewdiepie being the largest individual creator on youtube downloaded and then just re-uploaded one of my videos to his channel that'd probably get me some clout i imagine that if will smith broke into my apartment and started filming me for his next movie that'd get me some free clout as well which is not equivalent just to be clear and you know what? I would happily let Will Smith into my apartment to film me for a movie, but the key with all of these things is permission. You can't just go around imposing this kind of give and take exchange on people without knowing whether or not they'd agree to it. Especially when what you're giving is 40 cents. So those are the arguments in favor of this kind of thing, and I've got to say, I wasn't particularly impressed. While I'm here, I would like to thank Metal Commander, Cynical CJ, Blair TV, Nicholas Diorio, and the Vogue. Ugh, credit. I think we could skip this part, right? Should be able to find a way. Ah, uh, true. Especially when really I heard good. that Nicholas name. Fuck that Whoa. guy. Out the comments in that last section, and I would like to let you know that the file the virtual celebrity sent me started like this. I sincerely apologize if you can hear chickens in the background. Sat down to record. They were fucking up the storm. Went out to chase them away, threw rocks at them, well not at them, near them, tiny pebbles. They thought the rocks were food. Yeah, you can hear chickens in the background of the clips that she sent me. Um, she also, later, of her own free will, decided to send me a second version without chickens in the background, but I elected to use the chicken one. I'm a bad person. Hopefully, after all of that, I've done my part to put a dent in the attitude that Twitch streamers can just play other people's content in full without permission without transforming it in any way. I've seen a lot of streamers taking other people's content for granted like this, and honestly, it's just not cool. But this video is not a personal attack directed towards any streamer who's ever done this. I just want to encourage those streamers to hopefully, well, first things first, give proper credit. Especially if your justification for doing what you're doing is that you pay the content creators through exposure by giving them a fat bump. Ultimately, though, there is, of course, no <laughs> oh, one fat, correct no. way to do reaction content. It's just- I mean, these fucked up, though, they use the arguments, but obviously he doesn't give a shit and doesn't confirm it, doesn't want to make sure it happens. You don't give a fuck whatsoever. But it's a useful argument. What? Wait, what What do you mean by that? The the exposure stuff. Like, uh, oh. the point that I think you agree with, right, is that a fat bump shouldn't really constitute a hundred and, what was that, like, 50 views extra on a video? Well, no, that's not a very fat bump at all. I no, understand. not really. So he's using that shield, as would be provided by anyone else who's making actual, like, cogent arguments against this, when he doesn't give a fuck, he's just going to take advantage of all of it anyway. But I think one of those comments you read out earlier that I thought was interesting was, do you believe any, is it possible that any of these streamers, especially the higher up ones, know what they're doing, understand the damage, and are like, yeah, but I can get away with it? Well, I mean, to be clear, we still don't know the damage, if there is damage, right? No, I'm saying, let's let's pretend, do you, do you believe there could be someone who actually believes there is damage, but doesn't doesn't really mind? Oh, uh, but wouldn't give a fuck? 
Um, I mean, yeah, there's always going to be people like that. That is possible, yeah. But I think that, like, if damage was apparent and clear and we all agreed on it, I think public pressure would very quickly make that style of content, like, unpopular. I think people I would think, I think that would happen, and I actually think it is going to happen eventually. Mm -hmm. I think that this is getting louder and louder each time it pops up, and I'm curious what's going to happen next. Yeah, I guess we'll see what happens, yeah. It's a matter of mutual respect between creator and reactor and not taking anyone else's work for granted. Now, let's take a look at what Hassan said about all this in response to my stream. The YouTuber who made the video about the strange house, not Dunky, is mad at you, it's reacting to Hassan Abi's original stuff. content that he worked really hard on and made all by himself. Why? Because I was cooking while that was happening. Is that why? Hassan, if you see this, I'm happy for you to react to my videos. If proper credit is given, however, please don't just let them play as filler, sitting there saying very little and just having lunch or leaving them in the room. Like, come on, man, I'm fine with React content. It just requires a substance or significant reaction to proper credit. Okay, fair. Oh, okay. He's <laughs> taking it really well. Good. That's okay, totally yeah. fine. He makes yeah. the most sense. Well, that's, that's nice to see, isn't it? That's great. I mean, I understand. Wait, is he about to Sweet. do some cringe shit? Come on, you know how you know how this works. Jay's obviously oh, no. setting this up. No, 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 no. I love this. Hold on. Maybe we should have stopped the video right now. Hassan's yeah, we, if we totally did. Totally fine there. I thought that was totally fine. That's honest. Yeah. See, just like I said, if you make people aware that it's wrong, then they would stop. Right. Great. Yes. Excellent. One hundred percent. There's a little bit more of the video we could just toss on for the sake of it, though. Why not? Right. I'm sure. If there's yeah. a little bit, maybe it's the credits. Yeah. Yeah. Probably credits. My man said, "React harder." Oh. So I have like thirty <laughs> minutes of Hassan's response to work with in my editing room here. If I was the kind of shady fuck to choose the clips I play with maximum bias, I could make Hassan look like a wonderful saint. I personally don't care, but if others do, then, dude, yeah, absolutely, I will respect I that one thousand percent. Or I could make him look like the biggest gaping asshole who ever lived. Is such a fucking dingus, dude. They just the show their no, channel name, dumbass. How is that so fucking hard? Like, what is this attitude that you have, you stupid fuck? Man. <laughs> <laughs> is that really about the guy? No, he's shot, No, right? it, he's talking about, yeah, but like, he's talking to someone who just said, just show the fucking channel credits, and he's like, oh, fuck off, which is funny. Like, because yeah. all he had to do I was be like, yeah, be so I will. mad. I do. Okay, yeah. The easiest win ever, but it's his son. He finds a way. How are both those clips from the same stream? Well, all will be explained, and I feel that I need to start that explanation by giving credit where credit is due. You know, because giving credit is important. As soon as he found out that I didn't really appreciate his non-transformative reaction stream where he played my content, he apologized and made it clear that he wouldn't play any of my videos on his streams again. They have every right to be like, yeah, fuck off, dude. Why the fuck are you watching my video? I will never watch uh, their stuff ever again, for the record. <laughs> If they're upset about it. If you don't want me watching your stuff, I will gladly never watch it. I'm really sorry. I apologize. What Hassan seems to have respect for is a YouTuber's right to opt out of something like this. If a content creator makes a fucking YouTube video and they're not happy with me like six months, chat watching, then I fucking won't watch it. Personally, I don't care. But if other YouTubers do care, then dude, absolutely. I'll, I just won't watch it. I personally... I don't care. Politics frog became okay, I, I get upset if they like use it to misrepresent it or anything like that. I personally don't care. But if others do, then, dude, yeah, absolutely, I will respect that. It's not okay to, uh, you know, play someone else's video if they don't want you to play it. And I mean, it is good that he has this attitude, but. Ultimately, the phrase bare minimum does spring to mind. Like, yeah, him saying this is better than the alternative, but the alternative would be him going, I don't care how the creator feels. I get to take whoever's content I want, and, and then doing an evil laugh. Saying sorry and promising not to play my videos on his streams anymore. You know, that's cool, but then he does go ahead and follow it up with stuff like this. You get yelled at for pausing and talking too much, then you get yelled at for not reacting hard enough. What are you supposed to do now? I mean, what, what the fuck do you mean? I, I'm literally going to do exactly what I've been doing, which is whatever the fuck I want to do, bitch. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> you couldn't really ask for a more explicit declaration Bae. that he's not going to change the way he does things. <laughs> what a I'm God. perfectly happy to be in the situation where Hassan's not going to do this to one of my videos again. But I'm not really here to talk about me. I'm here to talk about generally the wider issue of React content. And nothing about that has been changed by this apology. Hassan even says that he's used to creators getting annoyed at him for this and that this is just the standard apology that he issues out whenever that happens. But some content creators get upset about it. And when they do, I'm like, I'm really sorry and I will never do this again. 
And it's as simple as that. It could be argued that the reason he's happy to just make the same mistake over and over again is that it's more convenient for him to just apologize whenever he's called out than it would be for him to actually stop doing the thing he's apologizing for. He's apologized for upsetting me, but I was never really upset. I just think that what he's doing is piss. What he's not apologized for is what he's doing, which is the actual thing that I took issue with in the first place, and is something that he spends most of his stream arguing in favor of. A lot of the arguments he makes are the arguments we've handily already covered in this video. Like, um... I mean, this is, like, not that relevant, to be honest. Yeah, I walk away while this video is going on, because I'm fucking, uh, what do you call it? I'm cooking and I'm eating. And, uh, they didn't like my, uh, react. They were like, react harder. Their criticism, even if it's, like, react harder, is... That might be a bullshit criticism, but like they're correct if they say, if they're like, I don't want you to react to my videos. And we've already been over the whole react harder thing. We don't need to go over it again. Hassan also seems to subscribe to the streamers need to do this because they're live for however many hours a day argument. He likes this one a lot, actually. It's normal to walk away uh, when you're fucking uh, live for 10 hours. You know what I mean? I like Hassan a lot, but it definitely puzzles me how zero content like this became so well received. I don't know. Maybe because I'm live for fucking eight hours. He could leave a sign saying gone for a dump back in five or could just give credit where it's due and actually react while he's in the room. Doesn't seem like a lot to ask. These motherfuckers are like, a dude, peanut bottle, dude. This just feels like Hassan wanted to not be streaming. <laughs> this shit is unbelievable, right? Because I haven't seen you try this stuff, which is good, but... Well, the problem is right now, Hassan is conflating the complaints of the viewers with the complaints of the content creators. Because viewers will make these complaints. Either stop reacting so much or react harder or whatever. Those are complaints for the viewers and those are issues of the audience, but it's a fundamentally separate argument than the than what the people that are... Well, I'm um, talking about the pee in a bottle one. Like, he thinks what's being said here is that you mm -hmm. cannot leave. It's like, nobody's fucking saying that. Well, yeah, but no, there are people saying that, but it's the viewers saying that. Are there viewers but, saying you can't leave? Yeah, or they want you to stand stream all the time, or they get mad if you take, like, a 10 or 15 minute break or whatever. Yeah, I mean, you'll get like, people yeah. saying, like, oh, this is fucking boring the second you get up to go and piss. But, like, yeah. fuck them. No, no, they're, whatever. they're... Oh, yeah, I know, I know. But I'm just saying that Hassan's problem here is he's conflating the complaints of the viewers there with the content creators that are complaining about their content being bitten, basically. But, like, you can just... I don't know, skip those ones? Like, who the fuck cares what they have to say? Like, oh, I don't want you to be peeing. I want you to put something on that entertains me. It's just like oh, I'm sorry, shit. sir. Are you not familiar with the legend of the one guy? Wait, yeah, I've... Hang on. I was actually... I always meant to ask you about this, because it feels like Twitch culture stuff as opposed to YouTube, even though you're like... What are you on now? YouTube, Kick, and Rumble? I don't know. I'm just on... <laughs> I don't I'm know, on man. Kick, I'm a Kick streamer now, okay? <laughs> okay, well, anyway, um, the whole... Because I, I hear Chud Logic saying all the time, getting one guide. Do you mean just talking about someone's arguments in chat? People... Streamers are very sensitive to their chats, and it's very easy for one guy in chat to say something that triggers the fuck out of you, and then you're stuck on that guy's comments well, like, that's forever. been a thing forever. Why did that get a name? I don't know. It's just, it's just, it is fucking, a just... But that's why... When you're like, oh, we'll just ignore the crazy people in chat. That's not possible. Uh, <laughs> As streamers, we we exist to get one guy. That's like. Well, I was actually going to say though, part of you guys' content is getting mad at one guy. So yeah, okay. I don't I don't see any issue with you fucking finding someone in chat who said something dumb and and you know responding to it. That's fine. Yeah, I, I mean it's I not always it dumb. And sometimes it's okay. Because it's one guy in chat. No, I mean, shit. like, as, as though it's a bad thing or a thing you need to avoid doing. Like, that's how it's always presented. Like, oh, I don't want to get one well, guy. Well, because sometimes it's a bad thing because it'll be like one guy that's saying something that, like nobody else is really saying, but then you get hyper fixated on like one dick okay. that said something. And now, yeah. I mean, it is funny. Like, highlighting someone saying, and I don't want you to go pee. That's funny. Yeah, it is. Because it's really mad. More, but didn't want to lose those uh, stream dollars, like, outside of the camera being on him. How is it any different than him just watching a YouTube video off stream? It just rubs me the wrong way. Like, how do you. Think of your viewers to just stream your break. Dude, what am I supposed to do? Die? Like, I don't understand. Hassan reacts to someone's suggestion that he could just put up a BRB screen or something by conflating that with them asking him to pee in a bottle at his desk. Yeah, those things are the same. The attitude that he needs to do this or he just can't have breaks is weird and flat out incorrect, but again, we've already covered it. He also makes the free clout argument, but he adds something to it that we've not seen before. Most YouTubers don't mind that, actually love that shit when Twitch streamers react to their videos because they get a fucking word. fat bump. We still have the fat free clout bump. argument, but now it's also packaged yeah. with the idea that most YouTubers support and like this kind of thing happening. Most other uh, content creators on YouTube and all around, don't give a shit if you watch their videos Asshole. or they like it. They literally like it. 
They want you to watch their videos. Please record your answer and send it to me. Would you be okay with it if a streamer played one of your videos in full on their stream without saying much or really adding anything? No. Fuck no. Uh, no I would not. Yes. No. Well, I mean, I could kind of do with it. Are they, are they willing to pay? No, I don't think I would be okay with the streamer playing one of my videos in its entirety without even really adding to it. If they give me a shout out and try to send people my way, then sure, but otherwise, no. 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 Oddly enough, I think I would be okay with it, but I also feel I'd have my limits. No. Other than very specific exceptions. Oh, I like that guy. He's right. No. Yes. Because if people didn't do stupid short-sighted things like that, then we'd have nothing to talk about. And this whole repetitive cycle of drama on YouTube would grind to a halt and I'd have to fill the rest of my days with anything else, like... were. Probably yes, if they were to credit me. If it was a much larger streamer than me and the way that they Look showed who it, it is. would possibly result in a bunch of their fans coming to my Good friend Xander Hall! Yeah! Friends, maybe I wouldn't have a problem with it, but... Just on sort of like a principle level, I guess I'd feel very offended that they just show my video and not provide any extra commentary or any extra substance to it. So yeah, I asked a load of YouTubers if they would be okay with it and most of them said no. I chose these YouTubers literally at random from people I already had DMs with. We've got a good selection of different styles, different topics, different channel sizes, and yeah, a lot of no's in there. And the majority of yeses had caveats and conditions. If they give me a shout out and try to send people my way, then sure. Which again, just goes to show the importance of mutual respect when doing this kind of thing. The thing that interests me though is the discrepancy between what Hassan was saying and what we're seeing here. So what's the difference? I don't believe for a second that Hassan was lying, so what gives? They want you to watch their videos. And I have many examples of this, of like content creators who I am friends with, like That's Andrew from Channel 5, who reach out to me to inform me that their new video is out so that we can react to it. He's like, I can't, I can't, I can't wait to see you and Chess reaction to this new video that we put out. I'm pretty sure I know exactly why that discrepancy is there. Hassan appears to be conflating the kind of reaction content I'm not okay with, with the kind of reaction content I absolutely support. Like a lot of the commenters we brought up earlier, Hassan doesn't seem to have drawn a line between reaction content that adds something and reaction content that really doesn't. Hassan has provided reactions that meet all of the standards I've outlined in this video. They're the kind of reaction that I actively encourage people to make and that I'm sure most creators would be absolutely thrilled to receive from a big Twitch streamer. It appears though that as far as Hassan is concerned, both these types of reaction are just reaction content to him and he's painting it all with the same brush. This conflation is first demonstrated when in response to me saying, please give credit and contribute something, he says, oh, this person doesn't want me reacting to their content. If you don't want me watching your stuff, I will gladly never watch it. I'm really sorry. I apologize. I will never watch uh, their stuff ever again, for the record. React harder is... I feel you laughing because you know that the subtext of that is him being like, I was benefiting you. I was benefiting you and now I'm going to take it away from you now that you've complained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he's saying, yeah. That might be you a bullshit criticism, yourself. but like, He's they're mad. correct if, they, if they're like, mm -hmm. I don't want you to react to my videos. Which is kind of a weird response to a comment in which I actively tell him I'm fine with him reacting to my content. It's not, if you see this, I'm happy for you to react to my videos. But it would fully explain why he made these comments if he's conflating those two types of reaction. And of course, it does make sense for him to think that way. If he has dismissed the criticism as just react harder, why would he draw a line between reaction content that does and doesn't adhere to a criticism that he doesn't view as valid? So when he says, most YouTubers don't mind that, actually love that shit when Twitch streamers react to their videos. He's talking about just Twitch reactions in general, which yeah, most YouTubers do appreciate. I appreciate that. I really like it when that kind of thing happens to me. But what Hassan seems to not understand is that most YouTubers do have a line where they're no longer okay with the reaction content. This line is gonna be in a different place for different creators. Most YouTubers like to receive reactions, but far, far fewer are comfortable with being used as filler as the streamer has some downtime. This is a distinction that it's vital to understand and respect if you're going to be doing regular reaction content on stream. Speaking of the free clout argument, Hassan also expands on it in a way we've not seen before. That's the reason why sponsors pay money to Twitch streamers to like play their video games, for example. Oh, no. There's a reason for that. It's because they want as many eyeballs as possible on it, and then people will go and fucking, uh, you know, find it on their own. Hassan seems to love bringing up They don't game. find it on their own. They You literally have to spam link and shit in chat. Yes, they don't just yeah. find it on their own. That was a really bad mischaracterization. <laughs> <laughs> 
games whenever he wants to bolster a position like this one. Basically, the whole video game industry not only tolerates, but actively supports YouTubers and streamers playing their games. Hassan likes to use this fact to demonstrate that there's actually a mutually beneficial relationship between a copyright holder and a streamer streaming their copyrighted content. Now, this actually is a great way to demonstrate the level of publicity that a streamer can provide, but it does ignore the reasons that video games are one of the only forms of media this applies to. Basically, I've recently played through both classic Star Wars Battlefront games. If I decided to stream both those games in their entirety to my audience, even without commentary, none of my audience would have actually played those games just by watching my stream. Anyone who went watching the stream- You know what's funny though is if he did, it likely would have been taken down by copyright or at least monetized by the owners for the, the soundtracks, it's all from the movies. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, like I said, if it's just from the games, it's fine. But if it's from the movies into the games, then you, you fuck. The Lord of the Rings games on, like, GameCube have footage from the films. If you stream them, you're gonna have to put a cover up, otherwise you're fucked. Same thing if you play GTA, you can't listen to the radio because yeah. sometimes they have, like, real, yeah. Game had thought, oh, that game looks really fun, and developed an interest in actually playing it, would then have to go and buy the game to do that. I've also recently watched the entirety of Smiling Friends, which is a show not a game. If I'd streamed the entirety of that to my audience, then anyone who'd watched the stream thought, hey, this show looks really funny, and then developed an interest in watching it, would have already seen it. Because I just showed it to them. Now, that's not to say they won't watch a potential season 2 if and when that comes out, or maybe go in pursuit of some episodes that they didn't manage to catch on my stream. Maybe they'll even go and buy some Smiling Friends merch, because from this interaction, Smiling Friends has gained a fan and all the benefits that come with that. But the companies that own TV shows and films tend to be a lot less positive about this kind of thing than the companies that own video games do. I could just as easily argue that the stranglehold these companies keep on preventing people from uploading their copyrighted content is proof that this kind of interaction actually hurts people. But the fact of the matter is that none of these mediums are directly equivalent to one another. Video games are a medium that get all of the benefits of this kind of interaction with basically none of the drawbacks. There's a reason it's different from medium to medium. Those were definitely the main arguments he relied upon during his stream, but he also said some other stuff that I found interesting, so let's take a brief look at that as well. One short part of the stream that interests me in particular is the part where he talks about why he thinks he doesn't need permission to do this kind of thing. So it's not okay to play someone's video if they don't want you to. Doesn't that mean you need to ask permission every time you watch it's someone else's content, which seems pretty lame? No, I don't do that. That's fucking ridiculous. I mean, I did say it was short. Another clip I find interesting is one where he's talking about the fact that he left the room for a while. I throw up the YouTube video on my phone and I'm watching it. I'm simulcasting it on my phone as it is uh, playing on the stream. And if there's a moment that I want to like, that I want to chime in with something, I will literally run back and fucking run back and and uh, uh put the fucking take there it's the same as like me sitting there and not saying anything i agree it's exactly like he was sitting there and not saying anything i'm starting to think he doesn't understand the issue that people take with this kind of thing i guess though that logically this means he does understand that when he's just sitting there not saying anything which is something he spends a lot of time doing he may as well just not be in the room and finally i know you're curious about it let's have a look at that clip just the show their that channel name dumbass this happens when someone in chat tells his son that he needs to just show the channel name show their fucking channel name dude it's not a big deal no shit dumbass what kind of a fucking baboon are you the son gets mad at this because <laughs> how much he agrees with it like he's I mad at how much he agrees with it uh. disagree with that why do you oh god i fucking despise these Ape shits, dude. well no he's getting big mad because he thinks this is really obvious i swear to fucking god like just such a fucking dingus, dude. Did they just show their channel name, dumbass? How is that so fucking hard? Like, what is this attitude that you have, you stupid fuck? Yeah, I know, I agree. Hey, man. What, what kind of, like... <laughs> he has some of the best clips online, like, reacted to comments. It's fucking hilarious. Um, Son is the master of the one guy. Yeah... Oh god, we had like a compilation on one of the EFAP episodes. Some of them were just you reacting to them because I couldn't find like the originals. It's uh, it's something else. He um, he's really bad at it, but it's really funny. Like yeah. you make it seem like I purposely was like fucking hiding it or something. It was literally on my screen for like a fucking hour, you idiot. So in my opinion, like a fucking hour, you idiot, is a strange way to phrase. 18 seconds. Yeah, that's how long my channel name was on screen during Hassan's original stream. The rest of the time, um, 
No, I'm not sure how he could possibly think it was there. Like, how can you be that unfamiliar with your own setup? Him thinking this doesn't make any sense at all. Unless, maybe when he says their channel name was on my screen for like an hour, he's referring to the second stream that he did. I mean, there it is. And there it is again. Not for an hour, but for long enough where saying it was up there for an hour is like a reasonable level of hyperbole. If that is what he means though, then he's referring to something that he only did because I called him out. Meaning this would be another instance of, well, if they complain, I'll do what I should have done in the first place, but otherwise I'll just play their videos without showing their channel name. And since callouts seem to be what it takes to get streamers to do what they they should have been doing the whole time. This oh. is me doing a call out. Man, I, I can't wait to see how this video goes down. It's sure gonna be interesting. But uh, that it was a mess, by the way. This is the video that Denims and Irrelevant responded to, and they were fucking morons with it. It was actually uh -oh. pretty great. Um, it was funny because when I met Chud Logic, I was like, "Lucky you didn't fucking make an idiot of yourself." Responded to this either, because holy fuck, the arguments they were pulling out. You won't believe it. You know what? If you want to know what they are, though, the EFAP episodes are all there, gentle viewers. That's all from me today. If you've enjoyed this video, good. And that is the video. And that's JXC's okay. channel, by the way, if you thought that was entertaining and you'd like to see more. Pretty straightforward stuff. <clears throat> Mostly movie reviews or TV show reviews and stuff. Okay, oh, give me feeling. one second. I want to listen to the Nazi comment. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, a bunch of Nazis get together and do an eight-hour reaction to my live stream. Gotcha. Yep. Damn. But hey, he literally heard about us five seconds earlier than that, so. All right, well. Hey, it's been fun, buddy. Stay it safe. has been Bye, fun. Buddy. Good luck with whatever it is you get up to. I'll, uh -huh. uh, I'll be around, I suppose. If, uh, if you need any more. Oh, help, yeah, you've got. You know. I think you should have perms of this channel. So if I'm ever in here, if you ever want to hop in and scream at me for something. <laughs> sure. Um, I'll usually message you beforehand because, uh, you know, it can be a mess. It can be turmoil. It's just this is something that I knew about us all. So. Yeah. All right. Well, I love you. Be careful, buddy. See you, dude. Bye bye. Bye.